Time out. So we got four. And see our thing. Oh, good. Okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Yarmouth Board of Selectmen meeting of February 6, 2018. If we could please start by rising for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. Thank you. First item on our agenda tonight is public announcements. Anybody would like to address the board? Mr. Krinsman, how are you? Good evening. Fine. How are you all? Uh, my name is Steve Krinsman from Yarmouth Port, Mass. Uh, just one quick issue. The last meeting I was at, there was some discussion about the Bayberry Golf Course nine hole thing, and was, we were looking at the possibility of the discussion, looking at the possibility of making it into a solar array. I just hope that the question I have is are we still looking at that, or is there anything more that we should know or come about? But I thought it was a great idea at the time, and I still do, and hopefully we'll do it. It's a uh, long process, but we're going to start going down that road to look at that. Yep. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Vita? So I think I remember saying at the beginning of the fiscal year in the summer sometime because of the uh, uh, impending uh, uh, prize that we were going to find out from the tech school that um, I suggested that maybe this board should uh, 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 sort of consider asking the uh, departments in the town to uh, hold their budgets down to a bare minimum or something like that. <clears throat> so far, <laughs> I don't think I can remember another year where the piling on has been as bad as it has been this year. It's just unbelievable. So I'm going to start with wastewater management at $350 million and probably going up. Uh, the tech building, $36 million. Uh, that includes the financing charges, I guess. Mattakees, uh, which is moving at the speed of sound, I think, to catch up so that they'll be uh, at the uh, building, I guess, at the same time that the tech building is. I, I don't understand what the uh, 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 emergency is. but uh, And that would probably be at least $50 million our share uh, without the financing charges, the way things look right now. DPW garages, $18 million. Library, six million. Uh, last, uh, at least as far as I, well, not really last, uh, but by no means least, uh, recreation, eight million. Uh, the school budget, which has gone up by more uh, by three point six million dollars from the previous year. So uh, why not pile on? I, it's just, uh, I guess uh, the, some kind of a dam broke or something. I, I just don't understand. I really don't. Uh, because it sounds, it, it looks as though we're on a parallel uh, universe somewhere rather than here on, on Earth. When you think of uh, a town of uh, uh, 23,000 people, more or less, and we're talking here about $470 million, for goodness sakes. Not that the 350 would be this year. The others uh, are very likely to be possibly this year. And uh, I just, it, it, it really is beyond me. Now, as far as wastewater goes, uh, I think, how many times have I asked, uh, please, Let's let's see if we can disencumber ourselves from from this group that we have encumbered ourselves with, and uh, wait, especially now, wait and see what the president's plan will be for the infrastructure, and uh, we we really have to lose the consultant. By the way, 
Is he on some retainer here in town? Because he was backing up uh, Pat Armstrong at the, one of the last meetings that you had. I'm sure he was retained by the Recreation <clears throat> Committee to do the work. Well, he's, I guess he's, he has the inside track for the well, town. Is I'm that sure it? I'm sure it was a competitive bid, but... Uh, I, I would very much like to, to see what that, what that was because... Uh, now... Uh, Can you wrap it up? Please. No, I'm sorry. I, 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 this, this is. Well, you have just a minute, so wrap it up. Uh, excuse me. Is this a new rule or something? No, but we only have so much time, Vita. I've only been speaking about two minutes. Okay. I mean, what, uh, That's fine. What's going on? Uh, I, I had laid out. A, well, I, I'm, I'm going to say it for the Mattakey School. Uh, I think we actually need to uh, drop that whole project and reconsider uh, and uh, uh, deregionalize. When we are talking about tens of millions of dollars to build that school, and we, we're not getting the cooperation that we uh, were hoping for from Dennis, I think it would cost us considerably less. I know it would be in the millions of dollars to deregionalize, at which point we, are, uh, we own the whole thing. We can uh, uh, do the budgeting for the schools. We can uh, supervise uh, and, and hold accountable the superintendent of the schools. And uh, it's very easy because we, uh, we can move the middle school uh, students into the high school. There's uh, more than enough room in there. And we, uh, that, that, that should take care of that. But in the meantime, while we were, were talking about, uh, while we're still on the Mattakey School, uh, the, the school would have to, if, if you proceeded with that, the new building, it would have to lose the auditorium because the auditorium, which is not a reimbursable um, uh, piece uh, in that building, uh, was uh, lowered the reimburse, uh, reimbursement rate by more than uh, 25% which means on a $100 million project, that would be like $25 million, I would think. In the meantime, you already have something called a cafetorium, which apparently means that there's a stage in there, a la uh, uh, Station Avenue. Uh, now, that pathetic stunt, stunt uh, that... Uh, uh, Pad brought on what that, the uh, that's inappropriate. No, no, it is not inappropriate. It, it is inap it, inappropriate, especially since uh, since apparently a, a good portion of those people weren't even uh, Yarmouth residents. What what is the meaning of that? Make point quickly. That's uh, okay. Uh, let's see. In that, uh, you know, Pat was lying low for a while, and rightly so. But now she came out with a vengeance. And Norm is right. Before she gets to build anything new, she uh, has to show some uh, uh, progress in maintaining whatever she already has. That, that had better. And, and then uh, one last thing that doesn't have to do with the, with the figures here. It's the uh, uh, vineyard wind. Uh, there's one more thing that you should consider. Uh, in, in that project. And that is, it appears that uh, Jim Gordon of Cape Wind has gotten himself in with those people and, uh, and he's given them the uh, engineering plans and everything for the, for the laying of the cable. And I think we have, that's another consideration that has to, uh, you know, weigh in, in our decisions. I mean, we don't, we certainly don't want to hook up with anything that that man has to do. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to address the board? Seeing nobody, we'll go to our 615 item of the Police Department Budget Review. Good evening. Good evening, Chief. Good evening. How are you tonight? introduce yourself and your team for the public, that would be great. Okay. To my immediate left is Deputy Chief Stephen Xaros, if anybody doesn't know who he is. Good evening. Uh, Lieutenant Michael Bryant. Good evening. Lieutenant Kevin Lennon. 
Good, Good evening. evening. Thank you for coming. Yeah, appreciate it. Tonight we're going to go over your uh, <clears throat> preliminary budget. <clears throat> Uh, I know you have a presentation, so take it away. Yeah, we'll try to make it as brief as possible, try to recap uh, budget season. Uh, so here we go. You know, the Armour Police operating budget was submitted according to the town-wide budget instructions with no increases other than contractual obligations. This budget does not include requests that uh, manage, our management team feels are sufficient for providing the police services for our community. All right, January 8th, uh, we went before the Finance Committee. Uh, the budget was uh, prepared according to the instructions uh, that we talked about a moment ago. And additionally, uh, we uh, brought, apprised them of the uh, budget deficiencies, uh, and I recapped them on the board here so you don't have to get into details. There's a document that you have that is included at the end of this PowerPoint, but I don't intend on going through. But it has all the, a breakdown of, of all those uh, pieces in the, the, these numbers right here. Okay. Uh, a couple weeks later, uh, we received word that our budget was approved, but it was the budget that was approved according to the instructions. As you can see, the FY18 budget was 7,308,068, and uh, the FY19 budget was 7,253,468, which is a $54,600 decrease. That did not uh, satisfy uh, many of the requests that we had uh, put forward. So I requested a second meeting with the Finance Committee and, and threw some options at them. A team <coughs> here, uh, with me were present as well. What we had suggested that we level fund our budget uh, in last year's levels with a $20,000 to go for the uh, Violence Against Women's Grant uh, fee that we need, to, uh, matching funds that we have to do, $25,000 for part-time uh, licensing evidence and records assistant, and $9,000 for our expenses. We uh, highlighted with them that our expenses already for, have been reduced for the upcoming FY19 budget, and we also received uh, two increases, significant increases already in mandated payments that we have to make. So we're already about $5,000 behind in our expense budget. This total of 54000 for these three items would have uh, made a level-funded budget compared to FY18. We also made some recommendations for some long-term uh, issues that uh, are predictable but yet unknown what the cost would be. And these are common across the town. I think the fire department has uh, similar issues as well as other uh, smaller departments as well. We have injuries and long-term illnesses. Uh, we are suggesting that we have a separate account made for $150,000 that we could, could go into instead of constantly going back to the board or going back to the town administrator looking for for money to, to fund our injuries and long-term illnesses. Mm -hmm. We have contractual retirement benefits uh, that come up, and uh, they're, they're, they're always coming up, and we don't have any idea when people are going to retire, and we can't afford to take them out of our operating budget. It just does not fit. And the other piece that goes similarly with that is the new hire uniforms and equipment. For example, we have uh, four new hires that are coming up uh, in the near future, those are unbudgeted. There's no money for the uniform, so we have to take it from our already strapped uh, expense budget. So we, uh, we uh, crisis manage our budget, basically. The results, what we worked out with the Finance Committee, and I was a little bit passionate if anybody got feedback on that, um, that the VAWA grant, the matching funds for FY19 are going to be covered in a free cash grant if everything goes well. And the intention is in the FY20 budget that that gets included in our regular budget. The part-time licensing agents, we're a licensing assistant. Uh, we're going to look at the difference in the salaries with some of the upcoming retirements that we know we're having. We may be able to fit that in for, for this year. And again, the intention is to add that into the FY20 budget. And the expenses uh, really didn't come to a real positive solution with that. However, there is a temporary solution uh, coming up that we may be able to use some available funds in this current uh, year's budget 
uh, that the town administrator will, will uh, look at that might be able to offset some of the future costs. And it was agreed that uh, a recurring account for town-wide injuries and long-term illnesses, contractual retirement benefits, and new high uniforms and equipment be pursued for FY20. It's too late in the budget uh, season to do it now. Uh, I think it was pretty much agreement that it is a good option that we have that set aside, uh, much like a, you know a snow and ice account that is there. If it's not used, it goes back. In closing, as a chief, I'm committed to provide a responsive and proactive public safety <clears throat> for the citizens of Yama. We must be reminded that safety and security of our citizens is the primary responsibility of government. I clearly understand the financial challenges that we face. However, I remain frustrated that we are not meeting the needs of our community and not fulfilling the deficiencies that we have identified. I, uh, after that, I leave it for you to ask uh, questions. Uh, Thank you. Anybody else have anything to add before we go to the board? Seeing none. Mike, we'll start with you. Good evening, Chief. On the uh, VAMA um, grant matching funds, you talk about funding that with free cash for this fiscal year and then after working it in the budget. Will that necessarily um, be a budget increase in the future, or maybe there it will be some moving around of funds within the operating budget? Uh, I'm not exactly sure how that would work, but the, it came late in this budget season. I know there were other calculations that went into making up this year's budget. Um, there's some, some additions being made to other departments, and there just wasn't much room to make any um, advances on the on the matching funds. We just got notified of the grant in December, late December. Um, but how it actually is going to fit in next year's budget, I'm not uh, the 2020 budget. I'm not exactly sure. Dan can. Yeah, if I might. Uh, yeah. So to the chief's point, that grant we were notified uh, after we prepared the budget, and it was very late in the pr process of doing that. So what we agreed that the easiest way because nobody wanted to say no to it, was to accommodate it for one year, would be to free cash, grant it, and then we'll work it into the police budget in subsequent years. I think it's a four-year grant, so the, the last three years of which we would cover it that way. What does the police budget look like beyond that? Well, we are in the middle of the matrix study for efficiencies, uh, about halfway through that process, so we're not sure what that will yield for a final result, and we're also in contract negotiations, and all of that rolls into the idea of, you know, what is it that we can do within those frameworks to reduce uh, costs if possible. Um, and that's the strategy going forward. I, I will say that we have dialogued quite a bit with the chief on the uh, idea about um, a reserve fund, if you will, for the uh, line of duty type injuries and the retirements. And, and that is frustrating. There's no question about that. And that's something we're going to spend some time uh, taking a look at as to how, how best to buffer that. Because to his point, it's a lot of juggling that goes on to uh, make it all work so that hiring isn't interrupted. Um, so it's, uh, he made a good point, and we'll work with the Finance Committee this year to uh, see what we can do about that going forward in the future. Chief, on the part-time licensing evidence and records assistant, can you tell me a little bit more about the need for that position and, and what this individual will be doing in those three different areas? Yeah, um, evidence and property and records destruction and records requests um, is a underestimated area that we, we have to be responsible for. Um, some of you might be aware of uh, what happened in Braintree Police Department, and it's uh, about a year ago where they had uh, pieces missing from their evidence room, the lack of a proper inventory, meeting the standards. It is a headache because we deal with, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of uh, jewelry, there's drugs. There's all types of other properties that we come in, to, in contact with. There's uh, uh, tight security and how to process them. Uh, been complicated in the past uh, four or five years with the Annie Dukin case with the state crime lab, uh, which has stymied our ability to uh, process and destroy drugs so they're being kept at the police station. We can only destroy about... 200 every three months, and we have about 4,000 right now that are ready to be destroyed. It's a liability that, that is sitting there um, that I don't feel comfortable with. 
Um, the licensing issues that are coming up are becoming more complicated. Uh, you, you're chairman of the licensing board. You, you've worked with Officer Magnuson on several uh, of the many of the, the things and the training that now we have to do uh, with the local establishments yearly. Um, that would be another part of this position, as well as to assist with the um, firearms licensing which has become more complicated with the change in state laws where now when someone files for a firearms identification card and I don't feel that they should have one, now I as the chief have to go to court to file a court document to bring a process forward in court. It's created a lot more, it's just more complication for us to get involved with where before it was the onus was put on the person who got denied. Um, there uh, so many different pieces um, with the evidence. The other thing are the court decisions that have come down that now we have to keep evidence <clears throat> for so long through, uh, through a trial, through a conviction, through incarceration, and through parole. We have to keep that evidence so much longer. And there are some items we have to keep forever. Um, and it's just a monumental task. And the way it's set up right now, we have one records and evidence officer that, that's Phil Magnuson. Uh, he does the, the firearms licensing as well as the alcohol licensing issues that come up. And the um, public records request, which I didn't uh, elaborate enough on, which have grown because of last year's change in the law. Um, and we have two clerks in the uh, records division. One is technically the evidence technician, but when we had our reduction in 2008, we lost one of the positions, so we have only two people that process all of our records in in um, the department. And it, this, she just does not have enough time to work in the evidence room and give it the attention that is needed. Um, it is a complicated piece. This is a valuable um, asset that we could use that will uh, make have us meet our accreditation standards, and they're all, not only that, they are the best practices, and they're almost like an insurance policy to keep us from uh, getting a black eye. We lose one piece of evidence on a key case. There's a cast of doubt with the confidence in the police department. Uh, we look at each other. We have to do professional standards investigations. We're <coughs> looking at officers, and it's not a comfortable feeling. Um, so the better we control that and maintain it, the better off we are. And this doesn't even account for, you and I talked before about backup uh, records electronically, that this position wouldn't even reach that level, would it? No. No, it does not. That would be something down the road that yes. would be separate and apart from it. Um, the injuries uh, and long-term illnesses uh, account that that you're proposing, not in this budget, right, but mm -hmm. for the future. Um, that would be, I would assume, be a revolving account that would carry for year and year. Would it, would it, be, would it be supplemented in future budgets? Would that, be, would that be a base figure that you would hope to carry from year to year, or how exactly would that work? Well, th that's, that's a thing. They're predictable but unknown. It's kind of a... Uh, interesting concept. We don't know. For one year to the next, we don't know, but we do know that we get injured. We can look at our historical um, injuries and the replacement costs uh, and have a gauge for that. But then, you know, when we're looking more globally across a town, we can look at the other departments, too, and see what they need, because they run into the same problem, too. So if we come up with a figure that stays there, it doesn't mean that's an open bank account that we use, but we use it appropriately for what it's designed for. And if we don't use it, it carries over the next year. Now, the exact uh, method of how to fund that, that's beyond it. Ed Sentio is the expert in that, um, uh, Town Administrator Kapnick, Kapnick, um, um can work that out. I'm not exactly how that will pan out, but there is a method to do that. And in terms of that figure, was that suggested by Mr. Centeno? No, that was from our own records that we looked. It was a guesstimate on, on what we have experienced okay, over the past question. few years. In terms of your officers, are you fully staffed right now? Or are there are some positions that have to be filled? We have uh, one officer that's starting next week. Uh, and we, right now we have eight officers who are not, eight positions that are not working. 
for various reasons, either by injuries. We have a sergeant who hasn't worked in a year and a half uh, that's in the process of a retirement. Um, we have a vacant two vacant patrol officer positions. One is being filled. We just gave an exam two weeks ago to hopefully get that filled soon. Um, we have at least two officers out injured. And the deputy, I don't know if you can help out with that a little bit. I'll see, I, um, yeah, we're down eight positions. They're all being filled. It's just the process of getting them filled. So from hiring patrol officers to getting them trained, which takes depending on whether they have the police academy. If they do, that's a big plus for us. If they don't, they have to go away for months of being paid but not working, really. They're in training. Um, and then once they to have their academy, they have to go through 12 weeks of field training. So if there's an opening, which we have, we fill it. But it takes a long time to get that person on the road. So we have eight people down. One is a dispatcher. A dispatcher left. Finding a good quality person took a while. Now that person is being trained, which takes a good three months before they're comfortable and, uh, and trained. So eight positions that are not working, but every one is in the process of being replaced. Thanks. How's that, Mike? Norm? I'm still making notes. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you don't pull out the calculator. <laughs> Uh, I appreciate your presentation. I, you know, I, I think just looking back historically, I think our board has been very uh, supportive of the police department. Um, I can recall uh, a couple of proposals for additional overtime having to do with training as well as uh, the PAC effort. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think we agreed to, to those uh, and, and that added to your capabilities, certainly, uh, looking back over the last five years that I can recall. Um, so, you know, I, I think our board takes very seriously um, your thoughts and recommendations with regard to what's needed in order to secure our community and, and keep it safe. Um, but we're we're also in tough times. Um, it seems like we're always in tough times. We, I mean, and, and um, you know, eventually that kind of wears everybody down in terms of what um, uh, having to continually uh, scrub every nickel out of a budget in order to to achieve our our end result, and that is to keep our taxes reasonable. Um, looking at your budget, I do have some specific questions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I noted that it, uh, although um, the number of positions is the same, 75 total staff, um, and <clears throat> of course there's, there's uh, contractual increases peg pegged into that, and I'm not sure what the contractual increases were in total that were plugged into the budget uh, for FY19 19, 19, yeah. there the, n none of the police officer contracts are settled yet okay so that's that's not that it so any contractual increases we step raises okay uh you know we we're a pretty senior department so there's not as many as there can be at one time or another but that can change in a matter of a couple of years Okay. <clears throat> do you recall offhand what the total step increases were for the, this last year? I do not. I don't know. Do we have that uh, information? What I could tell you is that the, when you add them all together, it equates to a $54,000 decrease. Because we lost some senior people that were high, you know, like one sergeant okay. had, he was at the top of the scale okay. and you replace him with a, a lowest lower paid officer there were a couple of those positions uh so the the net result is a fifty four thousand dollar decrease okay <clears throat> i'm just looking at the budget detail and trying to i i see the various uh buybacks and differentials and so forth that have been anticipated but i just don't see a number for the step increases is there I can get that for you, but I don't know that number off the top of my and head. Normally, it's readily identifiable in the package. Um, I 
Does anybody have a? Uh... Norm, there should be. Uh, if you have the employee wage detail, yeah, I do. That should summarize the difference between the current wage and the projected future wage. <clears throat> you know, there's not one clear. I'm reading here. Uh, Looks to be about thirty six thousand dollars. Okay. All right. So that's what that long pay is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So. Uh, that was 36000 and that was entirely offset then by the retirement of senior officers and the replacement with lower paid officers or, yes. or uh, staff. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so that's why the budget de decreases because of a change in the mix of the seniority of the staff. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Um, <clears throat> I guess I had another question about uh, there's a revenue page here. I didn't recall having seen that in the past. We always do a revenue page. Okay. Is that something? So, so that's just information that was provided. It's not something you normally do as part of your budget package. We, we ha we're required to submit any budget revenues. We don't have lots of revenues, but we're required to enter... Uh, it's changed over the years where the who who submits certain pieces, but okay. we do have to account for any revenues that we may get. All right, uh, uh, Dan or Krista, are the revenues uh, going into the total revenues uh, as no. opposed to? No, many of the revenues that they they generate on like police details, we pay out. So we have a charge on, that goes in to charge, say, the contractor or whoever's doing the construction. And a lot of that is eaten back up with the payouts on the salary end of things. So my understanding of the way how it's been, unlike the, the, the fire ambulance account, this isn't something that we build the budget off of because okay. it's not reliable. So this is provided for information yeah. based on historical. It is where the revenue is coming into the department. We do have some ideas for revenue enhancement that we've talked to the chief about. But right now. Not something I'd count on. Okay, I, I, uh, I guess what I wondered about was tickets, and I, you know I didn't see anything in the revenues with regard to that. And then, yeah, yeah, there's uh, towing accounts that can be established under state law that you can earn some money off of. So you know something that would stand out as a metric, say for instance, 550 crashes per year. How many of those become tow tow calls? If we put out a towing contract, you can charge. I think by statute, $113 a tow, some provision of that's an administrative charge, and you can build up a, a substantial sum of money. And uh, you'd have to go to town meeting and allocate that money for a particular purpose, like uh, okay. like a vehicle replacement, equipment replacement type of thing. So there are a number of those types of issues that we can look at. Uh, okay. One of the other ones is handicap placard violations. Those are like $300 a parking violation. Okay. In a very short amount of time, you can generate an awful lot of revenue that way. Mm -hmm. But again, to, to use it in a, accordance with the state law, we have, that's why we established a commission with disabilities a while back. That commission could use some of that money to do different enhancements that further the accessibility issue. So there's these are things we're looking for in the off season. Do speeding tickets come back to us? They, they do, but they generally go they don't come through the department. They generally go to the town, and so one of the one of the other departments files wherever they go. They file that as revenue. All right, okay. Because I didn't see that in the yeah. I'd have to ask somewhere. Rich Bienvenue on okay. how they keep track right. of that. Okay. Um, the other part of it that I did see here was the DUI liaison, mm -hmm. uh, and just from. Talking with some of the uh, folks in, at the school, I'm not sure that we're getting fully reimbursed for all of our costs. Is we get we the salaries are covered, okay. but the uh, benefits are not. The town picks up the yeah. benefits. So so we're at a deficit to some degree. I mean, you know, it's swapping dollars with the school system, but nonetheless, uh, this budget 
um, you know, we don't get credit totally for the cost of providing that service to the to the. You uh, can. That's a system. fair assumption. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, you know, I guess I don't have any other uh, basic comments. I understand uh, your concerns about the total budget and and uh, the direction. I and I'm not sure. Uh, you know, we've got an awful lot of decisions to make um, uh, about our spending and. Um, you know, <clears throat> as you know, I sit on the Affordable Housing Trust, and um, we review information with regard to what is our median household income. And, um, you know, if you look at that and think about uh, what our, our uh, median family earns for income, it's, it's just short of $70,000. I mean, there aren't many people on the police department that are earning less than that. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and, um, you know, I think we have to put things in context of how can we remain an affordable community um, when we're constantly getting pressures. And, and I'm not laying that all on your shoulders mm -hmm. uh, by any means. We have a lot of pressures from... Um, the school department as well uh, and uh, and I think that you know with an average uh, household income of sixty eight thousand um, dollars there's got to be some pushback uh, you know looking at our salaries looking at our capital projects um, there's reaching a point of, of um, uh, the system breaking with all the things we have on the table. So I'm hoping we can respond um, to what you believe are our needs for the future. Uh, but you know, right now, the picture doesn't look awfully clear on that. So. We've been forewarned. I'd hate to, I'd hate to <laughs> for the last 10 years leave with an idea that, yeah, it's in our pocket, <laughs> you know, because I think we have an awful lot of thinking to do about our priorities. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Eric? Um, first of all, gentlemen, thank you very much for putting this all together. Thank you. Uh, there's a lot of information here. Just to follow up on Norm's question, the, the, the school liaison jumped out at me, too, and um, the, the reimbursement is, well, the reimbursement that's listed on page... 154,000? Yeah. yeah. That's about twice what you pay that person. There's two what's, of them. what's the other? What? There's, there's two, two, of, two of them. Oh, there's, okay, so it's not just DY. It's, oh, there's right. There's one in Maddox. Yeah. And do we pay for half of the person from Dennis? That, is that DY? He, no? um, I think the school pays Dennis. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. I forgot about Maddox. All right. So, um, very quickly, my questions are probably easy. The FY19 budget that was recommended by FinCom is 54.6, which coincidentally is exactly the same as the amount your expenses went down. Is that a coincidence, or did they just say your expenses went down, so we're going to cut your budget by that amount? No, I, I uh, fit the budget. request in to make it level funded. You backed into it, huh? <laughs> I tried to be clever. <laughs> trying to make it harmless. But you got caught. <laughs> All right, that, that's, no, it's just those happen to work that way it's 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 you know when they're exactly the same they stand yeah. out so all right um the other thing was the um the second finance committee meeting with the twenty thousand uh, matching funds twenty five thousand part-time licensing nine thousand expenses that's 54 which is 600 short of replacing this 54 mm -hmm. 6 that was cut. Mm -hmm. But these are at least two new things and then just a replenishment of the expenses by $9,000. Mm -hmm. What did you get rid of to offset the, the 45000 that was going to be necessitated by the, the, the grant offset and the licensing and records assistant? Um, if I hear you correctly, we didn't get rid of anything um, that was based upon the 
reduction in benefits because we lost the senior people that caused the oh, reduction. Okay. Uh, That's right that on the, the first line here. Yes. This yeah. this reduction is just it's still the same level staff. That's just the savings in. Okay. So that's not a position. That's just to Norm's point. That was the savings between. That was a combined senior okay. for three or four different positions. Um, and I think at our last meeting or two meetings ago, um, this board agreed to cover uh, the twenty thousand matching. So that doesn't come out of the budget. <coughs> Did, we had a discussion about this um, licensing and evidence records assistant need months ago. Did we not decide at that time to fund it, or did we just give you I, the green light to go ahead with it? Well, I think we, we about a year ago we had a similar presentation that was more detailed on the back end of this. You, you have it in your packet there. Um, and that was discussed at that something that we should have right. but it didn't get a lot of momentum because of course we're we run into these budget issues and it's got to come from somewhere mm -hmm. and you know we get deep into the budget season and it's too late to add it in there right. um, and i guess the the final question on on these type of things accreditation was there a cost associated with that or were you just going to assign it i forget the officer's name that was here that night but is he just Malley, uh, was a, was assigned to it right now that's why he's not here he's back working on accreditation <laughs> um but uh we have a plan we're doing the best we can with it and you know bright individual working on it but we got <laughs> we're making some use of our injured officers we're trying to move things forward we got a, a plan for it ideally we you'll see it in the packet we would love to have a training accreditation officer which the two kind of go hand in hand uh in the future to maintain things these are just very fast paced trying to keep up with the requirements and the policies it's 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 a lot of work but right now we're working through it we uh the study the matrix study people have been in we've discussed at length about that whole process and and how to best uh, uh, take care of that we'll see if uh, what recommendations come out on that i think we're right on target for what we're we're looking at okay so it, it's real the number to to level fund is really 34 given that the grant match has already been assumed by the town which i figured at the last meeting we voted yeah okay i just want to make sure i recalled that correctly and that i was <clears throat> oh no i think it's a i think it's a great cause um okay so the the actual difference to make it you know level funding is now 34 rather than 54. correct correct um you know i i agree with norm um you know we're getting we're gonna get pulled in a lot of different directions in the next couple of years but you know as true as that is the the one thing that the people of this town um seem to be willing to spend for is public safety and uh I think our our level uh, our, our police department have um, provided a level of service that our residents and taxpayers have come to expect. Um, so you know I think to to suggest that the um, any any decreases um, you know would would be an injustice to our tax people. You know, especially in light of the, the society that we live in. So, um, you know, I, I would like to find a way to make the police department whole, um, which at this point is a matter of $34,000. Next year might be a different story. So, um, you know, I don't know what the nine thousand dollars ex expense line is. It seems relatively small in the no grand meals. scheme of things. But um, certainly, we, we heard the chief uh, explain the importance of um, <clears throat> accurate and safe evidence and records keeping. So these are important things. And like I said, the, the people of the community um, 
value this and um, seem to seem to vote in a manner that indicates that they um, are willing to pay to maintain these services. So I thank you for all that you do and see what the outcome of this is. Thank you. Eric, I completely agree. Um, I, you know, looking at your budget, I understand you did what you had to do to make it work, but um, some of it really, you know, I, I don't see you've you've taken out all meal expenses for for prisoners. So, I mean, that is that even <laughs> realistic? Well, I think uh, some of those deductions uh, are we're recalculating where the the expenses go. Mm -hmm. um, we went to a purchase order system this year, which has been a little cumbersome, and we have like way too many categories, so we kind of shrunk that down a little bit. But we'll still be, we're required, we have to feed our prisoners. Uh, they get one power bar and a glass of water every eight hours. Well, I mean, like, just, I'm just looking at the way that you were able to make up for it. I mean, no canine supplies, no prisoner supplies. Yep. I'm not sure, but at the end of the day, we're still in a deficit. Well, that's the, the, the that's deceiving. Like I said, that's if you really look at the totality, the expenses really didn't. The number actually, I think it went it's a down thousand. a couple thousand. Yep. And um, but the ca it's just a matter of bookkeeping. You just put it under supplies. But it just there's a lot of transfers because, like I said, we crisis manage with our expense budget. We do the best we can in paying up front all the known expenses, but all the others. Like for example, a repair for a water pump on a cruiser, what is it fifteen hundred dollars? Yeah, this eighty dollar part costs nineteen hundred dollars to fix. So um, that that brings me to a couple of the questions. So in terms of the the um, introduction that was set forth here, uh, no increases other than contractual obligations. That was the the given to every department. That was our statement this year. Yeah. So uh, to the chief's point, some of the departments, uh, ch uh, police, fire. DNR administrator, uh, we all went under a zero-based budget uh, mm -hmm. exercise, and out of that, we were able to go through their expense items, and we're able to do an exercise with the command staff to identify a couple thousand dollars of uh, money that we could uh, claim as uh, something that we could do without. Um, but everybody was, with the exception of the DPW seasonal line item, which was uh, needed to. Uh, further the desire about maintaining properties summer hour that was about forty that was forty thousand dollars summer hours for the library to equalize that that was about ninety eight hundred dollars i think um, those would have been the only uh two and then the uh the four firefighters that you'll hear about shortly, but they were paid for through overtime reductions and increase in the uh, ambulance receipt uh withdrawal from their account so that was essentially self sustaining um, to the chief's point about uh, the 100% purchase order, so the money's there to buy those things. It's just not right now detailed into a bro broken out line item, but everything is encumbered in a in a purchase order that they they're, they're going to buy. That'll allow us as the fiscal year unrolls to go through every department, find out what money is not encumbered, and then begin to make decisions. Like for instance. Uh, when the chief went in front of the finance committee, one of the items that stood out was the $9,000 ask for supplies. So coming off of that meeting, I had told the chief, I said, much like we did last year, we will go through all of the uh, accounts and we will make you whole on that $9,000 because we'll have um, money available in other accounts that went unfunded. So we will cover that. So that's a deduction doesn't have to worry about it for going into next year. The $25,000 for the evidence room, I believe there was a free cash article last year that addressed some evidence room related activity. To uh, there was, I, I remember taking a tour of the evidence room and there was a lot of effort needed to start moving some stuff out and so there was a free cash number. But in this particular case, walking away from finance committee, there was a pretty uh, significant conversation about come back in the fall with um, 
Officer Magnuson's uh, retirement package number, what that looks like, how much savings would be because he's at the high end of the patrolman salary, What because there's always going to be a lag in hiring somebody new. And the Finance Committee agreed to work with the chief as well as with me to, to come up with a plan to finance that $25,000 delta at some point next year. There was just a few too many unknowns right now. So we never um, we never do a free cash grant for something that's reoccurring but in this particular case are, is what you're saying to me that you think through attrition so this is an interesting to, so, yeah. so this technically could be funded for one year and then absorbed through the department's it could. So so it, this is a transitional. I mean, I, I've been here in a very short amount of time, but Officer Magnuson has a skill set that is incredibly... And wouldn't we want to bring somebody in before he retires? Well, so that makes that's a challenge, right? Because you can't necessarily bring somebody in without a salary allocation available. So in municipal government, it's very difficult to do any type of cross-training because you can only bring people in if you have a, an allotment uh, allocated for that. So uh, that's up on the police to identify the future strategy, but we felt that, because uh, uh, Officer Magnuson will be retiring in the fall, that this is a good strategy to work through the rest of the year, because he, he definitely, we you know, we want to transfer what he knows into uh, some other officer lineup, whatever that might look like, depending upon how the chief wants to set that out. But we need a transitional plan, and this is, an, this is often done to get you a transition to whatever the future is, <coughs> is to use some short-time money to address that till you can make those long-term adjustments perfect but um, i do feel comfortable walking out of here tonight that these concerns that the police have aired to you tonight we will address there are larger challenges no question about it that the chief raised that we'll have to spend a lot of time on this spring thinking about what a good strategy is going forward to address those and uh, we're committed to working on that so if what i'm hearing is correct the twenty thousand yeah the nine thousand, yeah. and potentially the twenty-five thousand, we yeah, could. Twenty thousand is definitely covered in a free cash grant that will that will appear. But in we front could of consider you. twenty-five for a free cash grant, knowing that in the year following. For officer, yeah, you 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 we could do that if you wanted to. If if you wanted to have the chief and the staff leave here tonight with a with a better sense of. Uh, for sure, we could put that on the free cash list. There's well, no certainly, I feel you know. I, I feel like Eric. I think the one thing that our town meeting has consistently told us is their support and and, and this board, frankly, um, can certainly do that. And in terms of trying to make them whole, um, can, can I interrupt for a second? Because sure. I think I think we're under a delusion of a budget decrease, just because this is the piece of paper we have in front of us. What we don't have in this is the salary increase that will be paid. Correct. Well, that's it's going to be somewhere in a the separate article of 100. What? That's in a separate article. What's correct? that? No. no. It, it, it's not in a separate article. It's part of the budget. It's just not in this budget. Are the, uh, right, for it's in a separate article on the town meeting warrant. It's not with the police budget. It's a separate article, right? For settled contracts, it'll be a separate article. Okay. That's correct. That's what I thought I said. But my point is there's somewhere between, you know, if it's 2%, it's $140,000. Yeah. If it's 3%, it's $210,000. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're carrying a separate article for settlements. Right. Yeah. So <clears throat> uh, let's not fool ourselves into thinking that this piece of paper reflects the budget. Oh, understood. So the budget that's in front of you as proposed is uh, is not reflective of the of the increase of upcoming right. potential increase. Net, that's net, correct. if if uh, you you took that fifty four uh, adjusted for the thirty to twenty four thousand, it really would be going up by somewhere between one hundred twenty thousand and one hundred ninety thousand, depending upon how we settle. Depending correct. on how we settle. That's correct. Uh, so, you know, let, let's not... Let's be careful with that. Be, be, <laughs> let's not... Uh, well, I know, but... but no, but it's uh, the whole picture. I get it. Uh, right. And, and, and I guess I, I understand the sympathy, uh, but let, let's deal with facts uh, rather than the sympathy based upon this piece of paper. Thank you for your points. Well, my sympathy will continue because, I, you know, I think 
to the chief's points, I think he's brought great points about, you know, $25,000 in one lawsuit alone would pay for itself. If, I mean, in terms of managing evidence, I, we've seen where that goes in terms of liability, and I trust that if that's something that you feel is important, then I support that, and I would work towards trying to achieve that. I support the $25,000 free cash as kind of a, a, a gap fund just because you know, it, it's, it's not logical to say let's wait until the person who is in charge of setting this up is gone so we can use his pay to set it up. It doesn't make any sense. Well, you know, I've talked about that at quite some at quite length because I think we have an issue in terms of backflowing, and we've we've learned that with the fire department and, and and the people that the positions that they have, and they wait until the day they retire before they can even start the hiring process, and yet you're paying for all these people on overtime for all this time. We've just heard the months that it takes, especially in the police department. There should be some way to jumpstart that, and if the positions aren't available, they can't do it. So we as a town have to figure out a way to. To start that pipeline earlier. Um, I, I just think the way that we do it is is not the most cost effective way. So that's my opinion. Does anybody else have anything they want to add? I, I, I'd like to comment on that because I think that um, in a municipal environment we operate a lot differently than a business would operate. A business would would look at its budget for the new year. The fact that uh, senior people had um, retired and were being replaced by junior people would be looked at as, that's great. Uh, that's the way we operate. We replace, and, and, and there's, there's always a, a, a churn in uh, employment. And a business would look at that and say, that's going, that difference is going to the bottom line. And it's and and my belief is that difference should go to our taxpayers, just like it would in a business go to the owners of the business. Our taxpayers are our owners; they should be the recipients. If our salaries and wages go down because the composition of our workforce has has become a little less senior, they paid for it on the on the upswing when. A lot of people were at the, the senior end, and they should benefit. Our taxpayers should benefit and, and not have municipal officials constantly saying, oh, we're not spending enough. You know, I, I, and I just think that we have to change that mindset and uh, uh, be willing to say, yep, um, our taxpayers are the ones that deserve that. Um, you know, I think the, if we look at uh, uh, many other major components of our workforce, uh, from um, uh, in the school department uh, uh, is another example where we have lots of senior people, and um, it's costing us a lot of money. And um, you know, if there's a, a changeover. Uh, in the seniority, that should benefit the taxpayers in that in that situation as well. And uh, you know, I I just think that our thinking on this uh, of well, we we owe it to the department. We don't owe it to the department. We owe it to the taxpayers. I'm not sure. Define benefit the taxpayer I'm not well if 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 we had it'd be easy if we had three officers and we could look at the pay and you know a small department and say okay well one of those officers had had uh, 40 years of service and and uh, was at the top end of the pay scale and now we're replacing that officer with uh, a, a young officer who's uh, uh, getting half that pay and uh, you know, we would say, okay, well, that differential should should just become part of our new spending base, right. and uh, we shouldn't just say, well, because that senior officer was making eighty thousand, the new officer is making forty thousand. That forty thousand should remain in the in the department. That isn't. That isn't 
I don't think we owe that to the department. We we, we still have three officers, and what we owe, I think, is to the taxpayers to say, okay, we've got forty thousand dollars now available. If you want that in your uh, pocket, that's fine. If you prefer to have a diff different services, let us know about that. But I think that's know. what we're trying to provide, though, Norm. I understand what you're saying. I, I mean, I think what they are trying to do with is is provide a different type of service. Mm -hmm. And also, my point about getting them in the pipeline is that that's not a savings to the taxpayers when we're hiring people on overtime to do the work in the interim. I, I think that, you know, if the, the, there normally is a certain amount of, of churn in positions, and um, now we're, is it eight or nine positions short? We're not paying people. There ought to be enough. That's not the case, though. If we have, we have eight vacancies? No. How many no. vacancies There's, do we have? There, I can explain. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, all right. No, they're out injured. Okay. Some a are, it's a mixture. Okay. A sergeant okay. Is, is retiring. Okay. He's been out injured for over a year, like the chief mentioned. We have a proactive anti-crime officer. That's her. So he's out of work, but he'll be back as soon as he gets better. We have another patrolman that hurt his knee, so he's out of work, but he'll come back. Okay. Another patrolman hurt his shoulder, out of work, but will be back. Uh, we have a, God bless him, a... Uh, detective that's overseas fighting the war so he'll be back in a year we hope but his position is unfilled we have it a dispatcher is, that's is, being is but he's not being paid he, correct there's a little bit of he, he, that's right yeah there's a difference we have to Sub pay a difference between his military salary and his okay. current salary okay and then the dispatcher that we talked about that left but we're replacing and then two patrol officers are in training so those are kind of, that's the overview of the eight that are not really okay. working. Okay. My point was that, it, that within Attrition, a department, yeah. uh, uh, I would hope that we would have enough flexibility to be able to hire in advance of departure and mm -hmm. uh, anticipate don't. that so that we could you yeah. know, get um, through the process. That would be ideal. Yep. Um, we've been fortunate that we're not a civil service department. And uh, we have two officers right now that were hired, three actually, that were on our list, but we were able to get them to volunteer to go to a police academy beforehand, 21 weeks. They did it on their own with no pay, pay for their own expenses, and then we, uh, we hired them. Once they were, once the opening came up, we hired them. That's an that was an advantage. That doesn't happen all the time. Um, you know, our most current list we uh, are putting together now, we're going to be looking for those that already are trained police officers and, and vet them out first. Mm -hmm. Saves us, it's about a $50,000 decision when we do that. Yep. But to, we don't have the flexibility to hire someone at a time. Uh, we just can't. We, uh, you know, depending on each officer when they retire, how, and we don't even know when they're going to retire. Uh, sometimes it's okay. so we had uh, two this year that we just had they would come out of the blue uh, and they're like oh now we're in a we're in a hole got to get people up and running um, so it's 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 not as easy as we'd love to be able to do that and that's part of this idea that you know if we can get those benefits paid for ahead of time we can be a little more proactive um, and get it done but you're right you it's a good idea but it's just not practical couldn't afford it and I also must say that I bring these suggestions to the Finance Committee and before you because I'm the chief of police it's my department I've identified uh, you give me that responsibility and I'm provide the best service for you and direct or suggest what what the needs are and these are what they are you make good points as far as the taxpayers go you know we 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 are very appreciative of the taxpayer that's who we work for and that's why we communicate with them all the time. That's why, you know, you get silly poems from me sometimes. <laughs> a uh, lot. It's, uh, you know, we put a lot of effort into that because we, we mean what we say. We're providing the best service we can, and it's my job to make sure we keep pushing forward and not be placeholders. And uh, that's why we have these asks. Does anybody else have any comments? 
Thank you all very much. We'll uh, keep you updated as the process goes forward. You're the first department we've heard from, I think, this, this year, other than maybe Kappa. We heard a brief right. Kappa. But, uh, Good luck. I don't know how you do it every Tuesday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good night. The next is the fire department. Please. Good evening. Well, while he's figuring that out, why don't you introduce yourself? Good and evening, and uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, Chief Philip Simonian and Deputy Chief Sawyer is uh, pulling up the, uh, the front page of the, uh, the budget document that you have on your packet. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> well, thank you very much for having us in tonight, and... Um, with regard to our, our budget this year, um, Dan had mentioned already, but uh, our, our increase, the majority of it reflects uh, the proposed four new paramedics, uh, firefighter EM, uh, paramedics, uh, to add to our department, which is really desperately needed. We haven't increased any staff since 2003 when we staffed the, uh, the fire station in West Yarmouth on Lewis Road prior to moving over to the new building on Buck Island. Um, it's, it's long overdue. Our run volume continues to grow. Uh, we had our busiest year ever at 7,211 runs, uh, which was up significantly from, from last year by about 400 calls. And uh, we're anticipating that to continue to grow, especially with the new facilities, uh, affordable housings that are going to be built at the Cavalier and at uh, Yarmouth Gardens. The new um, Mill Hill residents uh, from Maplewood, uh, it has been a significant increase to us. We, we go there several times a week for that memory care facility. Um, so with, with the other facilities coming online and other new growth that's going to happen in town, we, we anticipate our run volume to continue to grow. Um, but our, our manpower has stayed the same uh, over the last 15 years. So our, our budget is a, uh, with an, it's an overtime reduction. We are anticipating of about 200,000. And a net increase of 335. The majority of that would be the the new firefighter positions. The remainder of that uh, would be the contractual requirements for the cola and the uh, step increases. And so that represents a it's a 5.16 percent increase uh, to our budget. Expenses have stayed the same. Uh, we went through, as Dan said, the zero-based budgeting thing. Uh, we can account for pretty much everything we buy uh, through that process. So we had a very small area, I think, in office supplies where we showed a little bit of surplus. But it kind of fluctuates year to year. Some years we need to buy uh, items that come up, you know, a new printer or a new uh, computer terminal or paper. Uh, other years we don't need to purchase those things. So that fluctuates a little bit. But that's what we identified in that in the expenses. Uh, 
we're proposing uh, in a future meeting with you to take a look at uh, the potential to raise the ambulance fees, which have, we have not raised in several years. There is a, um, we'll have comparables with other communities on the Cape as well. There is opportunity there to gain a little bit of revenue uh, on the insurances. Unfortunately, the, ma the majority of our patients are Medicare, Medicaid, and that's capped. So we're really not going to benefit a lot from that. But the regular insurance, which is about 16 to 18 percent of our patients have regular insurance, uh, there's opportunity to gain a little bit of revenue there, uh, which would help offset the new guys' costs. Um, the other uh, thing we're looking to do is we're going to apply for the SAFER grant, and <laughs> that would cover us. 75% for the first two years, the town would assume 25% of that cost, and it's a 35% in the third year, the town would assume the 65% cost, and in the fourth year, we would assume the total liability of the four new people. That's pretty much all I have. Um, I'd entertain any questions from the board. Okay, we'll start with Eric this time. Um, first of all, thank you very much for putting this together and being here tonight. Can you explain the, again for me, I was I was using the time you were talking to think about what I was going to say, so I apologize for that. Well, I could go on a little longer if no, you want. You need no, more no, time? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, 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 the offset of the SAFER grant. Can you explain, can you give me the four years again? Yes, uh, so the first year, first two years, is uh, it's a 75% that the feds would pay, and that's salaries and benefits for the first two years. And then in the third year, they pay 35%. So the town share, the first two years would be 25%, 65% in the third year. And in the fourth year, we would assume the total liability. The first two years, the town's share is 25%. Correct. The third year, the Fed's percent is 35, so Correct. our share becomes 65. 65, yeah. It used to be fully funded years ago, but they've changed uh, the safer grant. That's why it's, yeah. uh, because in the past when we've been chosen for it. Correct. It was fully funded. It was much Up front. Okay. Uh, we were successful years ago back in 07, uh, 08. Uh, we were successful for eight firefighter paramedics at one point, but unfortunately it was, a, it was tough times and we weren't able to accept it. So we became less aggressive um, and went for four people. We again were granted the four, uh, but again it wasn't a good time financially and uh, we had to turn it back twice. So. Um, so that's a majority of your increase yes. for this year? And and what does it look like next year? At, well, it would well, kind I'm of sorry, depend. In, in, in the third year when we're more than double uh, the liability. So the budget right now is a 4.8% increase? It's about 5.16. To the tune of 335, 267, which, of which portion of that what portion of that is the four salaries well it, it would be the total of up above which was which is the 536 347 which is at the top line yep that would be your total actually but what we're anticipating is approximately 200,000 in overtime savings once the four paramedics get on the road and and Set. correct okay. and the net increase would be that 335 Set. after the overtime savings and we can assume that the overtime savings will be static, just for argument's sake. Yeah. It, I mean, the run volume is going to continue to grow, so it might go down a little bit with an increased volume. So I'm just thinking in the third year, that 536 becomes 1.25 with 200,000 offset. So in three years, that, that number is a million bucks. That's the number without the, the reimbursement, correct? The three yes. five thirty six is, is the flat number. So, but okay, so seventy five so percent of which is reimbursed. Right. So, if we just say we don't get the safer grant, our net increase to the budget is three thirty five two sixty seven for four new people. Yep. 
and also that that also includes the COLA increases and the step increases. That's all built into that one figure. Okay. So we don't get say say or we don't get it. That would be our net increase. You know, we're looking to offset that and reduce that. Hopefully, if we're granted to raise the ambulance fees a little bit. Um, and we'll have a whole separate presentation on that for the ambulance fee hearing for you, which is a lot more detailed than tonight, so Dan, which will explain it a lot more Dan, thorough. Dan, save me the math. Uh, assuming that the, the 200000 and in, in overtime savings stays the same, what does year three look like for us? Well, so we would be in a contract cycle, uh, too, so I can't predict necessarily what that settlement would look like. So there would be... Um, Well, it, 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 we're taking an extra $100,000 out of ambulance reserve funding to pay for that. So there's a further offset that's not necessarily shown there. The part of the plan, though, is to fund that, whatever that delta ended up looking like, is to, if we get the grant, that money saved would go into the fund to be able to call on on that outlying year is when the grant expires. So going forward, we can present that at uh, the 13th meeting, exactly what all that math would look like based on those scenarios. But that was the strategy, is that there would be between the grant, if we got it, savings made, ambulance fee increase, overtime <clears throat> reduction, increased run volume, and an extra $100,000 out of the ambulance reserve fund to fully offset it so it wouldn't have a negative impact on going forward. It's a complicated cocktail, to say the least. <laughs> right, but we'll have that information so, so, next week. So basically three years from now, you're saying you're, you're hopeful that we, there won't be any budget impact from those. those the the, the mission to the fire department was if we were going to get this done, it needed to be self-sustaining and supporting. Right. That's correct. Yeah, I mean, that's really the... Yeah, so that line. the ambulance reserve fund, it wouldn't have any damage done to it. Right. It would continue to grow as its present rate of growth. All right, well, yeah, it, it looks like everything else is staying the same. So, yeah. yeah. That's really the only question I guess I have, though. Thank you. Thank you. No. Uh, first of all, um, I'm very supportive of the, of the uh, four new officers. I think, uh, you know, that's been hanging out there for quite a while as you guys know uh, you know the the volume of calls has been increasing uh, uh, not little by little but significantly every year uh, and uh, and I don't know you know we've I think we've talked before uh, that roughly 90 percent of our calls are ambulance related is that still it's a in the 80s yeah it's in the 80s in the 80s okay so it's a substantial amount of what we do is uh, respond for medical or accident issues as opposed to fires. I mean, that's actually calling it a fire department to start with, maybe in misnomer these days. It, it was probably more appropriate way back when. But um, do you have a sense as to what the... You know, we get reimbursed to some degree uh, uh, for ambulance calls. Do you have a sense for what the loss is, if you want to call it a loss, or deficit is between what we are able to collect versus what it costs the department uh, in terms of staffing and expenses? Well, we collect between a million seven and a million eight, roughly. Mm-hmm. Um, it costs the department five million to run this whole operation, whole but operation. you're getting you're getting double duty on these on the personnel. Right. They're right. handling fire as well as EMS. They're all cross trained. They can all do either job. Yeah. Um, to isolate the EMS portion out of that, I would have to do some work on that and get back to you with a figure um, based on the percentages of the run volume being in the 80s, 85% say is EMS work. Yeah. I'd have to take that figure and and do a calculation for you. I certainly can do that for you for the next meeting. Even on an overall basis, I mean, you know, and, th and that's not really fair because, you know, you'd have to have a fire department anyways, no matter what. But Right. But, and, and I'm, I was just curious as to what the number was uh, more than anything else. I think it <clears throat> it's probably important for the community to know mm -hmm. what, what our efforts in uh, emergency services are for the town and what 
the town is actually paying for after reimbursement uh, and, and quote unquote revenue uh, so that we know what's really coming out of taxes for emergency efforts. Uh, I like to call it more like cost recovery than revenue, yeah, yeah, to be honest right, with you. Right. Because it's really, true. I, I don't count it as revenue, I count it as a, as a cost recovery of, of us doing our job, you know, our, doing our work. Now, in, in the past, we've, of the cost recovery, the million seven, million eight, a million two, I think, has been assigned to. Wages cover. and overtime. Yes, sir. Right. Are you saying that essentially that's going to increase as a normal set aside for expenses to something higher than that million two? We're, we're, yeah, we're we're anticipating it to go to a million three to help cover this uh, this proposal. Okay. Because um, we're anticipating the ambulance um, billing revenue cost recovery to increase to okay. hopefully into the million nine to two million. Okay. In the four coming years. So is is any of that being viewed as uh, a need for capital? Because that's the other portion. Yes. So we currently try to spend, keep it under 600. When Mr. Hinchy was here years ago, he said, you know, you're going to take in about a million seven, a million eight. A million two is going to be committed for wages and overtime. That's going to leave you somewhere between five and six for capital. So when we do our 10-year projections out, if you look at that, and I can show you that on the capital um, uh, form, uh, there's highs and lows. There's years we're going to have to purchase an ambulance and maybe make an engine payment or a payback to stabilization when we borrowed to buy, fully fund the engine last last time. So this year's capital, you'll see that. Uh, you'll see 100000 going back to stabilization, right. which is what we borrowed to fully pay for the engine up front without paying any interest. Um, so, but then there'll be several years after that that I, we may only need to spend 350 instead of five or six. So we have it projected out for the next 10 years and there's highs and lows, like I said, and but it all averages out to that five to 600,000 for capital. Okay, so I, I guess what I was asking was whether the increase in cost recovery was some portion of that being looked at as uh, uh, something that we would be spending on capital in the future as opposed to operating expenses? We certainly could because we, we, we have infrastructure uh, needs as well. Right. Uh, that's either going to have to be short-term borrowing or, or, you know, maybe we could pay for a portion of it out of ambulance receipts. Again, that, I'm not sure if we'll have that capacity. Okay. It, it's, time will tell. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but we definitely have infrastructure needs, and, and uh, as we talked about earlier, uh, the study that's being done right now, the matrix study, um, you know, they, they went to all three of our faci facilities, and every single one of them is full from front to back. Uh, there's no garage space in any of the three fire stations. Okay. Um, I guess the last question is, uh, you know, I, I, I hope we have provided in our budget for um, – the opportunities for uh, key staff members to go to industry conferences and things of that nature. I think uh, you know the exchange of ideas with with people in other communities is important. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the deputy and I are going at the end of the month to uh, Worcester to the professional Devel development conference um, put on by the fire chiefs in Massachusetts, okay. and it has several uh, really good classes. Uh, we attended it last year, and it was, it was actually we have some of the captains uh, going to come with us this year. Okay. So we're trying to build uh, the stepping stone for them to move up to our position someday. Sure. Okay. So we're doing uh, some mentoring with that. So, yeah, we do have a, a mechanism for that okay. uh, under seminars and mileage in the budget. You know, I guess I, I hope that those present some opportunities to look at you know, what other communities may be doing. Uh, I'm sure with the, the cost recovery levels that we have, I'm sure other communities look at what, what we're doing and say, you know, that's, that's a pretty good way of doing business. And, uh, but, you know, if there are other ways that we can attack the, the, the whole issue of, of um, not just getting cost recovery, but just delivering the services, uh, I think that that's certainly important to us. And, and uh, our community isn't getting any younger, uh, and um, you know the demand, as I think you forecasted, is probably going to increase going into the future. So, um, 
you know, I hope there's other ways that we can we can address that. And and, and I I have no idea what they might be, but you know, perhaps some some communities have come up with some new ideas. So, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Tracy. Um, <clears throat> Chief, um, I too am supportive of the four new hires. I think it's long overdue. Um, you not only have an increase in call, call volume, but the training is constantly more specialized. Um, the equipment, the new stretchers we have, things of that nature. Um, we, as Norm has mentioned, we have an older population now, which I'm sure is going to put more and more pressure in terms of the call volume. Um, the, the, the question, I have a couple questions on, on the f future funding of these positions after the um, federal money runs, the, f the supplement runs out. In addition to the overtime savings and possibly um, re cost recovery from ambulance receipts, um, what other sources are you looking at to try to close the delta on that? Or, or or have they been identified yet? Yeah, so one other thing we looked at, um, we, we do write off a significant amount of the ambulance uh, billing that we just can't collect after about 180 days. Uh, again, that'll be in the future presentation, but I'll, I'll explain it now. About 180 days, the billing company pretty much gives up on trying to get them. So we thought it's not a huge amount of money, but there is a little bit of a chance if we send the non-resident visitors uh, to collections, we may maybe get ten or fifteen thousand out of that. It's not a lot, you know. By the time you pay the collection company, but we haven't pursued that avenue, and that is an option that we're looking at. Uh, by no means would we do that to the Yarmouth residents or the taxpayers or anything like that. But uh, we, you know, there's there's a potential there to maybe gain a little bit of re uh, revenue or cost recovery from that. Um, that's one option we're looking at. Um, other than that. That was the last. That was the last thing we looked at, actually, between that and the uh, the growth in the ambulance fees. The other just observation I would make is that in addition to closing that gap, we have to anticipate that there's going to be step increases, colas, and in, mm -hmm. in bargaining uh, agreements that result in wage increases too. That we're going to have to somehow think about. Mm -hmm. Correct. But again, to avoid any confusion. I think you guys do a great job, and I'm fully supportive Thank of you. the uh, four positions. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, thank you, and thank you for the, uh, the presentation. Um, as I recall, the fire department was successful in the past in applying for a safer grant. Is that true? Correct. Yeah. Twice. And so you've applied twice and both times? We're successful twice, but unfortunately couldn't accept it at the time due to financial reasons in the town. I understand. How does this, when do you anticipate applying this time, and do you have any sense of? It has not opened yet. Um, the other grant has just opened, which is the AFG, or Assistance to Firefighters grant, which we applied for. Mm -hmm. The deputy can speak to that, actually. Um, the safer has not opened yet, but I anticipate it. When is it? Any day now. Yeah, it's, it's day. within the next week or two it should open. We're ready to go. Right. Does the fact that we turned down the prior two grants, that, might that hurt us in any competitive process? It, it, it could potentially, but mm -hmm. in talking with the gentleman that we work with uh, that does the grants with us, you know, he encourages all departments to, to yeah. continue to apply. I mean, it was just unusual circumstances that we couldn't um, accept it last time due to financial. The, mm -hmm. the town didn't feel it could sustain it after the grant was expired. Um, so... Um, it would it would probably hurt us if we had to say no for a third time, I think. Um, so I think by looking at these other methods to help pay for it, and if the grant comes, excellent, great, that's that's right. very beneficial, and that's uh, we'll utilize that. But if we don't get it, you know, at least we still have the funding, uh, hopefully, to, to put those four people on that are desperately needed. Okay. Would you like to shed some light on the other proposed grant application? Just the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, we um, just last week submitted for the uh, grant for uh, vehicle exhaust systems for headquarters in Station 2. So hopefully we'll be successful on that. It's a $126,000 grant. 
That's terrific. No, I applaud you for being aggressive on going after grant funds. Uh, it's not easy. It can be very, it, it can very be, be very time consuming and uh, aggravating. So the fact that you're looking at all those options, I think, is terrific. Yeah, and, and the we currently have the vehicle exhaust systems in all three stations. Station three was built in 2007, so it's really not very old. But stations one and two were do, done several years ago. Uh, so their shelf life, where we were looking at a significant upgrade to all those systems in those two stations, which is why we, we chose to go for the grant. No, that's great. That's appreciated. And I, and I too, support the additional uh, uh, positions as well and uh, your pursuit of these grant funds. And... Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions. I think Mike kind of hit on it in terms of other cost recovery efforts. So there was some one point in time we were talking about um, motor vehicle accident insurance reimbursements, and there was something legislatively that needed to be worked on. Do you know what the the? Well, we can still do that currently. I think it accounts for about two percent. Isn't that correct, John? One or two percent is the motor vehicle. Uh, we build the car insurance folks for the uh, for the ambulance ride, and, and we're very successful at that, and we get full payment from that. You do that now? Correct. And that's the highest percentage that we're able to do it's a, based on the law? Do you know that? No. It's, it, it, it's kind of tricky. It's, who, um, it's whoever bills it first. So, uh, yes. So... Um, if somebody's involved in an accident, can you give them a bill right then? <laughs> we <laughs> we, we do our paperwork, we submit it. Um, the billing company tries to bill it right away. If the hospital bills it before us, they get that the, the bigger amount of that money. So there's only for for that category, there's only a, a certain amount of money, and it's going to go to whoever gets there first. Uh, and that's why it's one point something percent of our of our fees that we take in. It's tricky. So I think you're talking about the PIP coverage on the uh, personal injury protection on the automobile. So, so, so what happens is they pay $2,000, and then you have to bill any other available insurance, and it goes to medical and doctors and everything. And then they pay the balance up to, I think it's like 7000 So it is a race, because if that those limits are exhausted, then you and you're behind other people. You might not be able to collect. Well, um, in terms of, I know we had, and we'll probably have this conversation later. Um, the billing company, what is their recovery rate, and how is that compared compared to other communities? In, I'm just, I, I, I like what you're saying. I, I don't think we're really aggressive enough, and I and I say that not because. Not because, I, you know, obviously the service that we provide, and we don't want to have, it's a service that we provide that costs money, and we want to provide that service. Except I think sometimes people take advantage of that. Um, and it's hard to really decipher, but I guess just because we have a small community and I sit behind the desk and <laughs> we see some of the people who get waivers that, you know, we all know, um, I, I think we waiver too easily sometimes. <laughs> Um, and I like not having that detriment to the taxpayers who are already paying for the service, but to to try to really get some recovery from more aggressively possibly from from other people. I mean, you hate to do that because you want to welcome people to our community, but it's a service that costs us money. Um, so I like that. But I'm just curious how um, how our policies. And, and you know we can wait till we have the I guess we can ha wait till we have the conversation about the reimbursements but I'd like to see how our policies compare to other communities mm -hmm. and what their rate is um, we have that data where where are we in our contract with this particular company uh, an annual contract I yes think we renewed it a couple of years ago right yes um, and we collect so it's 94 percent of what's collectible is what i'm going to call it it's not of total ambulance billing it's it's hard to explain we'll have somebody a representative here from right. coastal I, know, I remember when we set the rates the ambulance rates before we we set them over and above what's even collectible to some insurance so i i understand that yeah they have a Sometimes very good we 
collection rate at 94%. They do? It's, yeah. Okay. It, we've looked at other companies and looked to possibly change, and we've been very successful with Coastal. They've been a great, uh, they've been a great billing company for us. And so, we, as far as grant availability, um, knowing that there's two of them now, are there a lot of other grants there that we don't have the resources? I guess um, my question is I know in a lot of private uh, companies they pay part-time or contractual grant writers and it more than pays for itself. Is there a significant amount of money out there that we just don't have the resources to go after? that we should consider possibly trying a grant writer to try to recover? We have availability um, through the county. Barnesville County has grant writers that we could utilize if we wanted to, and I don't believe they charge us for that. Do you know? I don't uh, believe so. Mark? No. no. Um, I know that uh, Sean O'Brien, who, who heads up uh, the Regional Emergency Planning Committee with myself and the Wellfleet Fleet Police Chief, he, he has mentioned and offered grant writers uh, to us if we ever needed them. But we were successful. The deputy did a phenomenal job on the last one with the, with the stretchers. And, uh, and we also we talk to other fire departments all the time who have already been down this road, and we share information going back and forth. So if someone's so already... missing out on any... I don't, believe, I, I don't believe we are. I think we, we do a pretty good job. And again, the, the network is out there that... Other grant, we, we find out who got what what grants on Cape and off Cape, and that's part of the reason we go to those professional development conferences. I talk to other chiefs, he talks to other deputies, and we network all the time. And we'll say, oh, we got a safer grant. Oh, okay, well, we got a stretcher grant. Oh, geez, okay. And, and we share that information, and I think it's very helpful. Um, so I think we benefit all from that. My next question is um, the number, the Dollar of the 536, I don't see a separate line item for um, health insurance benefits. Are those inclusive in those? Because the only thing I see at the end would be um, is a holiday or vacation pay. I'm just, I don't, I'm not sure if we're looking at the whole picture. I see a holiday buyback. I don't, I don't see where the actual health benefits and such are factored into this budget unless they're in the full-time position line item they are they're in the full-time position line they're item. factored into that yeah. okay so i guess i'm a little bit surprised to see the 335 based on the process that the call center did um they brought they had done this analysis a couple of years ago and looked at it and they mm -hmm. thought it was net neutral mostly well the, they had about a net increase of about a hundred thousand mm -hmm. and i did a presentation for the board years ago and and my figure was about a hundred and thirty thousand um and i was very conservative when i did mine uh because I, I would hate to have to come back and say hey, we, we made a mistake and i need more money um so the other difference here is you, you're adding in the colas the step increases and the potential retirement buybacks are all in that delta that three 335, 335. that's all part of that and that equates to about 156,000 of that roughly is is your your colas your step increases and your we have potentially a few individuals that may retire in july so we have prepared for that for their buyouts Um, so, so in addition to the 2019 numbers, or this is just the 2019 colas, you're saying in the 135 that you presented or the call and center looked at, those numbers didn't include the cost of living. But this, you're saying... Okay, and and so also, if I may, in in the presentations, I don't believe the benefits were in there. We've put the benefits in here, which okay. that equates to about $22,000 roughly in benefits. That adds to the base salary. Okay. So the COLA for the whole, if I'm looking at this correctly, the longevity pay here proposed... Oh, that's not the coals. That's the steps. Okay. All right. All right. Just making sure. Yeah. 
Uh, also, the information uh, from Collins and the presentation that I gave, they, that dates back to 2014. That's so that's, that I know, it, it seems like it was a couple of years ago, but it's been almost four years ago. And uh, obviously, we've had significant increases since then in, in, it's uh, long in contractual things. And I'm, I'm happy to see us um, pursuing it. I'm glad that we're going to pursue it, whether we get it or not, because I think that that's important. I think it, it is. Get going for it, not getting it again would be, be awful. But we We've put ourselves in a position here. It sounds like that we're we're um, we're going to be able to achieve it, and that would be a bonus. So, I'm hope hopeful we're successful, but I'm glad that we're able to accomplish it, even um, in spite of it. So, I appreciate your work and efforts. Thank you, Eric. You had something else you wanted? To no, uh, I, you know the safer grant. I think part of the reason we've turned it down twice is you know, different, it different economic times, and well, I also think override, that we right? didn't we didn't pre-fund it the way we're proposing to do it this time. Correct. So, you know, I, I think the costs at the end of the grant were too daunting at the time to want to go down that road. So, okay. third time's a charm, right? Hopefully, great. I, I think yes, if I might. Yeah. After uh, next meeting's presentation, we'll answer a lot of that projection. We made sure going into this that we had a good strategy, fully loaded benefits, retirement, the whole thing, and, uh, and a funding source that was reliable going forward into the future. So we wouldn't have to be in this. The chief was very diligent about saying, I didn't want to go down this if we, didn't, if we couldn't say yes. He's been so. beat up. <laughs> we didn't want to say no for the third time like what we just talked about. Right. Yeah. No, but I know. It's, it was tough, you haven't but I... said no yet. Can you put that on the application? <laughs> Wasn't me. No, I was a captain back then. So. <laughs> no, if I recall, I think it got lumped into an override the first time. Um, it, unfortunately, it was during that yes. whole time with the, the tent meeting and all that was going on and, yep. and the closure of the West Yarmouth station, unfortunately. Yep. How does it go back that Well, we're in a much better position now. Yes. So. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, next item we have capital budget review. I see Sandy hiding. <laughs> There's a uh, updated handout I gave to you. It's loose, not in the packet. It came in to me tonight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. February 27th, huh? Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. It should be February 6th. <laughs> We're ahead of the times. So. Ahead. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. Good evening. I'm going to talk about Good evening. this again. I mean, on the 27th, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Only the third time. There we go. It's not going to be a fourth. How are you? Is Good evening. We are good. We are good. Thank you. Um, you want to introduce yourself and your members? Sure. Uh, my name is Cindy Fife. I'm from the Capital Outlay Committee. I am the chair. And to my right, I have Joanne Crowley, Kurt Sears, and Judy Carver. Um, we're here just to highlight the changes. We came in in December and did our presentation to the board. We do have a couple changes to, um, that you will see in the memo. Um, we have removed one mower from the Parks Department based on department efficiencies and the recommendations from the DPW Department. We also have removed three items from the Golf Capital, totaling $100,000 based on budget concerns. But we also added in one item. It's a renewable energy initiative for $15,000. So currently our total is $5,864,710. We've also provided the board according to the charter with a five-year plan. I'm sorry. I, I just need to make sure. Are we, are we following this? The information from the today or the just, no not what was in the packet there should be no. a new handout that was right I'm sorry the packet. okay well, I'm yeah, there's, a, the there's a memo dated February 27th <laughs> which outlines how it spreads over various articles in the town meeting warrant you got this one. okay this yeah I got it that's not, that. It says it's 1.3 million you just said it was that, yeah 1.3 million is the routine capital okay we also have um, $197,000 transferred to the Capital Stabilization Fund. 
DPW, we have 1,444,550. That addresses the roads and stormwater. A roll-off truck <coughs> from recycling of $200,000. Water capital, 1977660 Golf leases of $167,500. By a department of 575 which totals the $5,864,710 that we're recommending. Okay. There are some issues that came before us this week that we have not addressed yet, which we have a meeting for free cash um, requests. Uh, we're meeting on the 27th to discuss those items plus the DPW facility. So uh, we're scheduled to come before you for a full presentation on March 6th at the public hearing. Okay. So Back one more time, huh? Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, I... And can we walk you through the memo? Would that help? Or? Mm -hmm. um, well, we can see if, if the board has any questions. I'm not sure. I think you pretty much just... Right. We, we, it's basically three changes from when we came before you in December. Okay. Does anybody from the board have any questions? I... <laughs> well, Mark? Um, you have to forgive me. I... I I've been trying to follow this, and uh, I've had no success in following your presentation, so I, I feel somewhat dumbfounded. Um, I'm looking at the memo, but the presentation didn't necessarily follow, so. Um, okay, we can I, I don't know if maybe I need to watch the videotape and get the replay, but. Um, I, I think, Mark, what, yeah. what we, this, which is the very first okay. piece, yes. four pages right behind the memo. That's what you had seen used in the same to, format on November 27th. Okay, so when your presentation that, began, we, sh you, we were expected to have this in front of us? Those numbers that Sandy just ran through, mm -hmm. those totals, um, you've seen all those numbers before mm -hmm. the first presentation. Mm -hmm. The only real change is $100,000 came out of the golf capital plan. Okay. That's kind of the net, right, Sandy? I mean, right, and along with the mower from the Parks yeah. Department. The memo outlines the articles on the town meeting warrant. Okay. So four articles. And okay, so you're just speaking to this, this yes. breakdown and the changes there rather than she to can the go through the memo if you needed to. Yeah. Would would other board members find that helpful? Uh, yeah, I think I it might be helpful to. Can, but she's going to be back. They're going to be back again on March 6th as well. I'm comfortable with deferring. If, if that's that's, the, that's the feeling of the board, oh, I, we've, okay. we've just I can I can walk you through the memo. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Article Eight, which um, includes our routine capital mm -hmm. plus the transfers to stabilization for one point five million dollars. That's from the tax levy mm -hmm. that that the board has allocated to us. To, Got that. Um, we also have $96,000 in free cash initiatives that we have not addressed yet, that we will be, we just came before us yesterday, we will be discussing those on the 27th, and we will make our recommendation during the public hearing. Okay. So that's the first page of the memo. So as, as I look at it, these two sheets, totaling a million three oh three, are what are, you're talking about in this Article 8. Yes. And you've got really $197,000 unspecified Correct. that you're taking and, and recommending that that be put into a capital stabilization fund like we have in the past. Yes, that is, okay. that is correct. Okay. Right. Perfectly. Thank you. On the second page of the memo, we have in Article 8 also, there will be two items, roadways improvements, from the tax levy for $1,244,550 plus stormwater permit compliance of $200,000. Those both are from the tax levy and will also be part of Article 8. Under special revenue routine capital, we've recommended $575,000 for ambulance from ambulance receipts for the fire department. Plus, under Water Enterprise Fund, 
Fifth Golf Enterprise for $167,000. Those are for the leases. And as we mentioned before, the capital of 100000 has been cut from our recommendations. And then we have wastewater from recycling funds for the roll-off truck of $200,000. We will also be addressing at our next meeting the Public Works Facility Design and Construction, and we will make a recommendation on that when we do the public hearing. I'm not sure if anyone has any other questions or concerns. You know, we'd appreciate if you get those to us, and we surely will address I have a couple those. of questions. Sure. I'll, I guess I'll ask them now. So, okay. I'm, I, I see the priority, and I also see um, the rating system. I assume there are two separate ratings that you have now. So, you have a priority one through whatever the needs are, but I see some items that are possibly a priority six get funded before a priority one. And then I also see here you have a rating A, B, C, or D. Is that an internal thing that we don't see? Uh, is it is it correlated to the priority? Do you, I mean, if you if you the priority is the department's priority. Okay, so we have items that are priority five, six on here that are being funded where priority ones are not. Right. the The committee came up with a pro, with an A, B, and C priority system, where A is based on whether it's a safety security or a financial commitment B it could be deferred without operating expense and customer service implementations and C it could be deferred with minimal operation expense and customer service um, implementations so we came up with that rating system last year to, mm -hmm. to be able to help mm -hmm. us prioritize the items that were before So we're us. just not seeing it. So you're saying that something that is a priority six possibly for a particular department would be a rating in your mind as a requirement? Right. It could be a public a safety issue or... Okay. or um, okay. Just on the surface, it doesn't make sense that we're not funding priority ones when we're funding priority sixes. Right. And well, in many in many cases, if I if I may, Tracy, yeah. for the fire and police departments, which we just heard, um, they're more or less forced into a ranking. They would say all of them are number ones. <laughs> they would, but they have seven projects and they put them in order: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's why for some of those projects, you'll see there aren't multiple ones for each department. There's only one one, one two, one three, one four. And they're into it. They're kind of set into a forced ranking, um, and then we kind of ignore that to some degree, but not really, and then apply the ABC, which is the de final determinant. Perfect. So perhaps in the future, maybe we could see the instead of the prioritization, we could see the the ranking. It would maybe make more sense because we don't I have the do information. I think you did get that in December, awesome. although this memo does, I'm sorry, does not reflect it. But and we can get you that for the, the next for the That'd be great. Hearing. No, I, I, I'm sure that there was another reason for it because on the surface it just didn't make sense. My, my other question is related to the schools. Um, that's a significant amount of money and a requested and a minimal again. So when we're talking to the schools about, you know, their maintenance budget, I'm not really sure we're showing a, a commitment here that we need to be showing for our facility. So I'd, I'd like to understand the, the rationale behind that. Well, at the time we received the request from the schools, we, we felt there was, we needed more information as far as w what projects were going forward. Um, so we, we did request we did recommend the forty thousand dollars for the for the repairs on the roof, but um, we didn't consider the other items like the athletic fields or some of the buildings that we're not really sure what the, the what the future of those buildings will be. So again, that prioritization of number one for a new athletic field was their prioritization, but not Correct. your ranking. Did they we make did, a we did, did they? Um, on the energy management system, we did give that a priority of a B, which was which was pretty high up. Um, but not knowing what the future of the various schools was going to be until until that's decided, um, we de we declined on that particular item. But we did rank it pretty high. Okay. 
I just, I guess I'm concerned with our commitment to our own facilities here. We also don't, did not know, and we still don't know, what the dentist's commitment was. So, so, we, so this is for a combination of schools? Uh, yes, many of these items have a, um, it's partly Yamas responsibility and partly dentist responsibility, and I do not think they recommended those in their capital process, but okay. they may not be done yet. Okay. So that makes sense. I mean, just on the surface, it, I mean, 40000 out of a couple million dollars seems kind of pathetic, to be honest. I just don't know the information behind it. So, um, well, I'm the one that looked at the schools, or the school. I looked at Emmy Small. I did a tour with Carol and Ken. Um, the problem with Emmy Small putting money into that school, if anybody knows it or has been near it, it, it the, two, the, the roof is just the beginning. Um, if you remember the school, it has big eaves overhang mm -hmm. on the ends of the roof. And the $40,000 is to try and repair that. Uh, we felt that putting way over $2 million into a roof on a building that has so many other issues would just be throwing money away at this point. Because you think of probably a 20 or 30 year lifespan on a roof for a school that's not going to be around for 20 or 30 years, I think the general feeling is that that would be money poorly spent right now. Right. So <clears throat> the 40000 we approved was to try and minimize the damage that's already occurred because ice dams have gone up inside the uh, eaves of the, of the building and caused damage at the end of the roof. Huh. So that's, that was what that was about. Because they apparently ha their needs at Emmy Small just start from one end to the other and could probably total $10 million. So it's, you know, and I know Eric's had some concerns that and I have the same one that Emmy Small really should have been in the pipeline before uh, Mattakes, but I don't know whose decision it was to go the way that they did. Huh. But at this point, to spend big money on Emmy Small, we don't think it's very wise without a really comprehensive plan. Right. Well, we got a letter at one point in time in terms of the, the septic as well. I'm surprised not to see anything on here. Um. Yeah, I know the septic issues, there's electric issues, there's the loading dock, the boilers, you know, like I said, it's everything. So, um, The energy management system, is that something that obviously energy management could possibly save money in the future? Is that something that we're not funding that's going to save us money in the future potentially? It, it could. And the new schools would, ha would have them, whatever happens. Um, but again, going back to is Mattakees going to exist for much longer? Will ME Small exist for much longer? Is it really, is it worth putting the money into those? You know, they, they said some of the components could come out of those schools and go into a new school, but I doubt that would happen. I don't think anybody would stand behind moving equipment out of one school to another, or, you know, from an old building to a new building and say, yeah, I'll stand behind it. So I think the reality is that that's money that's also going to not be well spent right now on a building that may not, you know, especially with Mattakees if it goes through. And certainly Emmy Small, I think as soon as we get done with the Mattakees process, Emmy Small will probably have to be looked at in the same, in the same way. Hmm. Okay, that was my only question. Does anybody else have any? I had a <coughs> question about the uh, <coughs> capital stabilization fund. What, what is the process um, that allows those funds to be used, hmm. Dan? Is it a town meeting vote or is it town a Town meeting two-thirds vote to bring money out of stabilization accounts. <coughs> So we had been we had set that up because we had known for some time that there was some significant capital projects coming. So at at some point in the future, when that does happen, we could draw that money out to right. buffer the impact on the tax levy. That's correct. That's exactly the reason I ask is because you know I brought up at the last <clears> meeting. <throat> I think it's foolish to spend forty thousand dollars putting. A band-aid on a two million dollar problem when the entire building is probably going to come down at some point. Um, you know, I didn't know if we could um, how immediate the need was. First of all, what are we going to get for that forty thousand dollars? How long is it anticipated that it's going to work? And you know, I, I was wondering if we could start our own kind of subcategory within the capital stabilization fund for schools. Um, we've been encouraging the schools for years to start their own capital stabilization fund, but <clears throat> they don't seem to have the resources or the will to do it. Um, 
but you know, given the uncertain um, future of that building, and and for what I think you're likely to get for forty thousand bucks, I'd almost take like to, to see that money put away, and you know, especially you know, we still have to discuss the the, the philo philosophical question of whether or not we want Dennis to contribute to Yarmouth buildings, but. You know, particularly in light of the fact that Dennis doesn't anticipate making any contribution to any of these things this year. What's the wisdom of, of spending that money now and instead of putting it away earmarked? What do you think? I mean, Kurt, will the building last? You know, they, they, I think we've had a letter of interest <coughs> for ME Small for years. Can I yeah, take sure. a shot? So that's a really good point. So I, if I get the school department's position right, if they could go back in time today, they they would have done Emmy Smalls ahead of Anarchies. But that being said, to your point, th there's nothing that stops us at the local level. I mean, obviously we got to get over the Maddox vote to figure out where that's going. But to take some money and work with kind of the like similar to the MSBA process, but with uh, with local control, with a uh, design firm to find us, to help with us, what's that path to the, to the future? So there is a 1990, I believe, eight classroom addition schematic at Station Avenue. So really preliminarily, some conversations have been had that, to your point, the future would be, let's get Maddox done. Not sure what the reuse of that property is yet, but that's for another day. But certainly on the schematic for Station Avenue, we could roll that out. It'd have to be updated uh, for today's codes, but look at what it would look like to put that addition on our own Station Avenue. You get out of ME Small. You don't put any more money into it. So and what that savings looks like, and that's certainly because you're not probably going to see MSBA participation for, that pro for a, another project for a long time. Uh, and that's something we do have the authority or the ability to do on our own. It just comes a matter of what does that plan look like. And I'd, I, to your point, I'd, I'd prefer to take some of that money and use it towards bringing on board an educational school architect to help us with that path forward and what that would cost. Because I think we don't have time, the kind of time in the MSBA process. And ME Smalls is uh, deteriorating faster than the process will ever arrive. So I think we could be really proactive to that end. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you on several points. You know, Station Ave was designed specifically to be added on to. I, I, I know that. And you know, I, I agree. I think the, the money is better spent getting kids out of there than keeping kids there. Um, but, you know, again, that, that's a much larger discussion <laughs> than, than we're prepared to have here tonight, and it's a much larger number than 40000 But, you know, I, I agree with you. The, the money is better spent, you know, getting somebody on board that can begin to do the study and the design to get those kids into Station Ave. We don't need two elementary schools. I think conceptually a lot of people have support for that. It's just a matter of getting over the Maddox issue and then working on that one real quick. Right. Well, you know, that, then the question is, do they need a $40,000 Band-Aid to get, you know, Maddox is going to take four right. years, five years by the time the planning and construction are done. Yeah, it's yeah, some I don't number want to of tie years. them up with, I mean, these are much, much bigger questions. <laughs> If but forty thousand dollars is a lot of money. It is, and there, there were pictures taken of, of the specific repairs that the school has asked for in, in lieu of a new roof. Mm -hmm. uh, there are pictures available, which I'm sure can be sent to you, or if anybody, I'm sure, wanted to go by the school, it's something you can see from the ground just looking up. Whether you decide you don't want to support it or not, that's yeah, I, I can see that point. How many but years, I, though, Kurt? You think they'll it will help? If depending on what repair, it could. Could buy five or ten years, but I have a. So that's a good. That's a good. Uh, my feeling is with, with with the experience of people I know in the building trades of my own, is that if they say two point, I think it was two point one million dollars was the roof number. When you strip that roof off and you find the rot that's on, in the wood under that roof, I think it's a three million dollar job. Easily. That's my sense. And that, that's why, I, you know, I thought the forty thousand dollars would get us by. 
as opposed to spending what we think is going to be 2.1 is going to, and I guarantee it will be a lot more money to put a new roof on that school. Because I think the vintage of that school is 1963 or four, somewhere in that area. So it's, uh, it's, it's lived a long life already. I mean, you know, that's just food for thought at this point. We'll have you in here yet again. And <laughs> <laughs> we can make some real decisions. Well, I mean, certainly I think five years for, <clears throat> for 40000 is an investment that's worth it. We're going to need some time, and we have to make the school habitable. We've got to make sure it continues to stay habitable. And any time you can enclose that kind of stuff from the weather, you And the other problem is do we, do we trust the $40,000 number? We don't know. That's all. This is all their information we're, we're working off of. <laughs> Well, I guess we have nothing else. But I, I think to that point, perhaps we should continue to look for additional funds to simultaneously look to get out of it. Look to make a plan for ourselves, and yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what that number is if it's 40, but whatever. No, I, I would imagine uh, the number's probably somewhere maybe to come up with that and get us kind of like to the mirror of the MSBA process, probably 40 to 60 percent of the Mattakees building, because it's a significant lift to go out and do this to get us to the point where you could actually decide what that looks like. So $300,000 maybe. So we've spent seven fifty on our Well, not yet. I mean, we've only spent, I think it's but maybe less than 150000 Perhaps when, when that gets reimbursed. Yeah, there would be some money available. We could utilize yeah. some of that to plan for the next and you know I think that there's a lot of things that we could talk about here and there's a lot that we've put off too much for too long I mean we had a lot of bad times they did we did and these buildings got neglected and we're paying the price now yeah I think the other problem though is, it, is a lot of people are paying attention to the chatter right now um, in the process that we all use to do our capital and other things and um, you know, the, the school's supposed to, if you read it, the five-year plan's supposed to include the schools, but we don't really have a, a five-year plan. And not to pick on the schools, but if you look at what they ask for with what we know they need, and their athletic fields are at the top of the list, there's something wrong. I think they, they could do a much better job planning with the, the physical structures to help that they need as opposed to the fields. I know everybody would love to have some new fields or improved fields, but... If your roofs are leaking and your boilers are failing and you just had a $60,000 failure <clears throat> of your electrical service at Mattakees, there's something wrong with the prior priorities over there. Unfortunately, the way the state does their program with schools, it kind of uh, compels them to be poor stewards because they don't give you the money until you're so bad mm -hmm. that you're worse than everybody sure. else. And then they come in with window, rooftop, and boiler money. And that's a really bad message, right. but that's a broken system, horrendously so. But at least between us, that the town, and the school district, I think they should, there should be some more realistic asks. I, I will list. say, I, I, met, I spent some time with uh, Jeff Colby today on that, and he said, you know, that they have worked, tried to reach out to the schools, but it's, it's very difficult to prospect out this kind of real information. You need to make an estimate or uh, proposal. So I think to some degree, to your point, uh, Tracy, that when Mattakee's feasibility is over, we get reimbursed, that would be a good opportunity to take the, take the bull by the horns on this particular uh, Yarmouth-owned buildings and come up with the plan working in concert with the school department. But somebody's got to drive that situation. We could mirror the MSBA process, develop a, a building committee of stakeholders, same thing, but we all we drive it at the local level, no, no interaction necessarily with Boston. So it would be much more efficient, but it would still involve everybody that has a stake in Emmy Smalls and Station Avenue and what the future could look like. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you know, I... <coughs> It, we've got to move ahead with an ME small evaluation. I think there's no question about that. Um, uh, you know, very honestly, I think we have to point the fingers at ourselves in terms of uh, this, the, the planning. I mean, um, every school budget has come under tremendous scrutiny and uh, pressure. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, 
the message has not been uh, we're we're open to spending. Mm -hmm. um, the message is, has really been uh, spend as little as you can, and and, and even and resistance to overrides, and and I'm, I count myself guilty of that. But the um, we have to get to a process where we can. Um, uh, the school committee and the administration can lay out a realistic plan and present that to us and uh, have some receptivity. So, um, you know, if the first part of that is is uh, getting Emmy Small moving, I, I think we need to do that somehow. I do have some other questions, um, and this could be a repeat of the first presentation, so forgive me if there are some uh, repeats in this. Um, the um, town hall lower level. <laughs> With everything that went on, is this a duplication of work that has already been accomplished? I don't no. believe so. No. It's the no. back section of the building. So it's the part that wasn't, it wasn't affected. affected. <laughs> okay. I, yeah. I told everybody right. to push the water to the back, but it didn't work. <laughs> but to your point, though, what we well, with right. the reconstruction, we're uh, looking to use money uh, be allocated with the reconstruction that we can put the building back together once just the, right. the first time so there's no duplication yeah. of any effort that way okay so all right good um, the police vehicles I I think that's three vehicles 180,000 is that correct Sounds right. no, it's, four. it's four vehicles it's four vehicles okay all right um, we received the list today, um, and um, I still have a lot of questions uh, on the list, mostly because I see vehicles that were acquired in um, uh, 2017, 2016, 2017, that have very low uh, very low mileage. Uh, I, I see two vehicles, number 23 and 24, that were acquired in 2014, and they have under 15,000 miles. <clears throat> and now, assuming the mileage numbers are are accurate, that gives me. Are these Some, police vehicles? Excuse me? Yeah. Uh, oh, the police vehicle. Yeah. This is the list with, that was sent Brian to us can... uh, by email today. Um, so, it, you know, I guess my reaction to this is, okay, um, you know, uh, the, the change from 309 to 180 makes some sense based upon the mileage figures that are here on this on the spreadsheet chief did you want to yeah we can probably chip in on that i don't know yeah i think so <clears throat> <laughs> okay it's kind of brian can okay and with, with regards to some of the vehicles like i'll go back to your last one j23 and j24 2004 suvs those are the two vehicles assigned to the two schools so they're not patrolled um, sometimes 24 hours a day or seven days a week. Then Monday through Friday, 8 to 4, assigned to the two schools. So those won't be replaced for X amount of years because they're not a line car, which we refer to, which would be J10 to J22. So some of the cars are going to get more mileage because they're assigned to three offices over a 24-hour period. So like a J, J1, the J16, 13,000, that's the chief's car generally the only one that drives it and these mileages are all were done back in September okay. when we first did the, um, the spreadsheet for you why wouldn't we assign a high miler to the schools they both had high mileage cars and when we went through the budget back in whatever year it was 2014 it fit to get them a car now and it'll last them 10 plus years so we won't be replacing that car for quite some time okay and, when, and the other issue, when you have a line car, the gear that's in the school car versus a patrol car is completely different. They don't have prisoner cage, long rifles. So there's, to retrofit a car for a school or back to patrol, it's going to take a lot of money and time. We just have to move all that equipment around. I'm just thinking of the fact that it's just sitting there, right? I mean, you know, it's... 
it sits there, but it, it doesn't end that when we have special events or if we have to transport just police officers because there's no prisoner cage, we use those two cars. So we can often take them from the two schools in the summertime they use for other events, functions, just to move people around, not to transport prisoners. Yeah, I guess I, I looked at, uh, you know, there were other vehicles in the list as well, uh, and I guess <clears throat> um, you know, number four, number one, number four, 10 and 11 all have, you know, not all of them, but uh, three of them have 10, uh, 10, under 10,000 miles. And they were acquired 2017. So they've been around for a year? No, so you'll you'll see the, the year, that's the year of the vehicle, 2017, and the fiscal year. So quite often, like the ones that are highlighted FY18, all those cars have been ordered, only one has been delivered from Ford. So it says 2018, but the only one that we've received is J15. The rest is still in Texas being built, and this is the last half of the year. So the, the, I guess the best way to say it is just because it's a 2017 doesn't mean we got it in July or January. We get it sometime within that full year. And I don't, quite frankly, order the cars until the mileage is high enough to get it. Okay. So when we get a new car, if the car is 95,000 miles, I'll wait three or four months to order it to get the mileage up. Okay, do you, do you have a schedule that or, uh, you know, somewhere the actual date that you put it into service? Because I think that's what is, is probably more significant, both for you and, and for us. I, I could get that. I have all the purchase orders when the cars come in. I don't have them on the sheet, okay. but we could add that. Okay. Yeah, I think it would it would add some clarity so that we you know we're not fishing around trying to figure out what the what the how long they've really been in use. Um, but uh, that probably would answer most of the questions that I had on this. So we also provide at the beginning the inventory description it's like a 12 page document it details what every car is so if you'll look at the mileage j1 what's that car on this one that we supply explains what each vehicle is for and who uses it okay okay thank you thank you um, okay Energy management um Yeah, I guess I had uh, uh, I had one question on you know, the Station Avenue. Uh, they uh, asked for a tile floor for the school. Is there some reason that was not ultimately provided? Yes, they did ask for $100,000, I believe, on the, for the tile flooring. It was a pilot program, um, and uh, the committee, based on funding, did not recommend it. It was, it was just uh, <coughs> replacing the flooring in several classrooms. It was a pilot program, and it, didn't, um, it didn't, just didn't make the cut. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I, you know, I guess I, I have some level of discomfort with where we are on the school funding uh, okay. as well. And, and you know, um, you know $40,000. I, I don't know if they made a presentation. Uh, and, you know, so uh, they weren't slamming their fists on the table or anything of that nature looking uh, – to have that money provided, uh, but um, you know, it doesn't seem like we've we've provided an awful lot of support. But um, no, we can go back and look at that. At, we do have a meeting coming. <coughs> okay. It, um, at the time when we did meet with them, they gave us of their list the top two th priorities. Right. It was the roof, and yep. it was the energy management system. Okay. Um, 
and somewhere in the balance of the mix was the tile floor. I see. Station Ave. It was not high on their priority list. Yeah. Um, but those were the two that they, at the end of the meeting, they said, okay, what do you, what do you need the most? Energy management and, and, the roof. Uh, and roof. Okay, but the energy management didn't make it to the cut. We've been waiting to possibly find out what the Dennis Capital Outlay Committee has recommended. Um, because uh, that's, so that's only our that's portion. for what school, or is it for all the schools? No, this is our portion of it for all schools. For all the schools, okay. Um, okay, uh, I'm not sure why we would necessarily wait. I mean, you know, if we, um, I understand, uh, you know, it, it's got to be a shared cost. Uh, it won't get done until, unless Dennis st steps up to the uh, bar as well. So. You know, I, I have a sense that we uh, we ought to be the ones that that respond and 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 then let Dennis do whatever they want to do. If they want to be uh, say no, then fine, that's their problem. But um, um, I think the problem, though, Norm, is is if you think about looking in the let's say the ten year window, you have three three of the schools that they want to put this equipment in that may not exist. It just seems okay. A little bit of a well, that's a little bit different scenario. Yeah, all right. Think about it. Okay. Maybe may be gone. Yeah. Wixon may okay. be gone. Dennis and Emmy Small may be gone. It doesn't seem. It's a good idea if you want to say let's do it in DY and Station Avenue. Mm -hmm. Those schools are still going to be here. Okay, but I think everybody in both towns has a lot of concern about spending that kind of money on a system that may not. Have a building to put it in. Limited so, utility, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. And they did say it could be moved, but the technology may change between. Yeah, which I tend to think is probably what will happen. Nobody's going to want to move the equipment. Because it's going to be old, be. old technology. Just like a solar system, right? right yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then that sheds a little more light on the situation. I, I appreciate that. So, uh, um, the Munis time and attendance system. Um, ninety thousand bucks. Uh, you know, I, I, it seems like an awful lot of money for a, a timekeeping system. And I think we can defer it. We did. Um, we did implement that when I was in Dennis. There was a lot of cost savings as far as cross training within departments. Um, we can defer that to Sean if you want more details on that. Well, I guess you know I, I'm I'm looking at the the expense level and thinking about that in terms of okay, um, then is that software? That that software uh, and consulting and a migration, so that from the uh, current system. So. And the current system is what? It's uh, Time Force. It's a third party system that we've had for. Six or seven years, it's never worked properly it's, uh, for our use. Munis is, you know, uh, in the last seven or eight years, has really come along. That's got a lot of modules that we've really implemented successfully. Um, this is another one of those that will help us streamline the payroll process throughout town, through, throughout all departments. So when you look at the ninety thousand dollars, that's for, you know, over four hundred employees. Okay. Um. So just having uh, um, an outside service provide that is, uh, uh, have we made that kind of a comparison? We have, particularly with Munis, it's double the price. Okay. You mean it's double the price to go to an outside service? Correct. Oh, really? So. Okay. All right. Um, I can understand that then. So, <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Um, um, and then the renewable energy in initiatives, and can, can we be more specific on that? Yep, I can elaborate on that as well sure. as, okay. as Dan can. Uh, you know, part of our Green Communities Initiative that you've heard about uh, requires us to have a energy reduction plan in place, which is 20% energy reduction. Uh, this is a good step toward in the right direction. We're having our energy audits done presently this month for all our buildings. Uh, the result of those audits is going to be implementation of energy saving initiatives. Uh, so we're using, uh, planning on using some of this funded funding to start implementing. Okay, that. so you're anticipating recommendations, uh, uh, and it will have to chip in something uh, on those, uh, even if they're funded through some other source Correct. primarily. Okay, 
All right. Thank you. Yep. What happens if we choose not to go with the uh, <coughs> green communities? That's the stretch code, right? That's the stretch that's code, but th that doesn't mean we wouldn't pursue energy initiatives in town. You know, I think that's yeah. just to save money. So the Cape Lake Compact uh, is spearheading the grant it's uh, or the grant activity. The money came through them. Essentially, it'll give us uh, a, t a pathway for 20% energy reduction on town-owned buildings over the next five years. And... You could choose to not participate in green communities program and fund, if you wanted to have that energy reduction, fund that yourself or go into the program. And the last element we need to get through is um, the stretch code. And you can use your grant cycles to offset the costs that need to get you to your energy reduction. So the uh, program will pay for that. And I conceivably, if we're really aggressive, uh, I think our first grant would be around $200,000 thereabouts if we were to get into the program that money could be immediately put into that energy savings effort and then <clears throat> in subsequent years you could be in line for up to a quarter million dollars a grant uh, a, a year um, future grants to keep moving towards that energy reduction goal of 20 percent over five years or two other things okay, okay. um okay uh, I, would, I think the last question on the specifics is with regard to the golf capital Appreciate the fact that you've already taken some pressure off the golf department by removing some of the capital requests. Uh, the remaining $167,000 for lease of golf maintenance equipment, that's uh, what kind of maintenance equipment are we talking about? Uh, that is all their mowers, uh, service vehicles, equipment, uh, all of that equipment. They have a one lease for all of that. Okay. So... <clears throat> is this committing to acquisition of new pieces of equipment then? My understanding it's a recurrent it's, yeah. dollar value in his budget. Yeah. It's, it's, committed. it's not a new lease. It's the continuation of an yeah. existing lease. It's already committed? Correct. Okay. So, so it's not committing to a new 5, 10-year lease. This is just the annual repetitive mm -hmm. uh, um, lease cost, essentially. Okay. Okay. Um, and why do we call that capital as opposed to operating expense? It's been in the capital historically. Okay. Uh, what, what, I mean, it probably doesn't make much difference. Is, when, I'm not sure. uh, uh, okay. Well, I think it fits the criteria for the money and the lifespan of the equipment. It's just the way you're paying for it is different instead of paying for okay. it all at once. All right. It still, still ends up as a, an expense on the uh, enterprise uh, okay. uh, budget. So. Okay. <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, the other um, part of this is the, the five and the ten-year plan. Um, and, um, you know, the, uh, I, I note that in the ten-year plan, uh, I'm sorry, the five-year plan, uh, there are answers to the question that I asked two weeks ago uh, or two meetings ago regarding the timing of expenditures with regard to um, Sandy Pond, uh, Flax Pond, the splash pads, and, and so forth. And those are scheduled out in this five-year capital plan over the next uh, five and five fiscal years, basically, uh, going from 2020 to 2023. Um, and those numbers flow into the 10-year plan, which uh, <clears throat> right now is showing that in 2022, our debt service relative to the items in the capital plan will amount to seven and a half million dollars. Um, and that's, it's just a huge increase. Um, of that, 3.2 million is related to wastewater, and I'm not sure where, um, where that, I, I don't recall having had a discussion about uh, a, something going into the capital plan the last discussion I recall was that um, 
wastewater was going to be funded with uh, with item or uh, by ways that did not increase our tax obligations, our real estate taxes. Yet our projections now are saying that four and a half million. Or, I'm sorry. Uh, $3.2 million per year is going to be going into wastewater. Um, and I guess uh, I, I think we need to spend some, some time looking at the commitments that are, that are here in this plan and what that's uh, committing our town to and looking at some of the priorities because I, I just... Um, uh, our capacity to continually increase the taxes uh, in our town are uh, is it's limited, and uh, you know, seven and a half million dollar annual increase is is not going to be well received. Okay. Well, the, the five and the ten year plan aren't our plans; they're staff and administration. So we haven't we haven't got to that point of reviewing that. Understand. And you also have to remember, if they don't identify the funding sources, even though you see things there. So, you know, there's a corresponding expense plan on the capital, but not necessarily a corresponding plan for how to fund it. Point well taken. We don't know that. There's a lot of yeah. unanswered questions on that. Okay. Thing. Yeah. So I think we were back in late <laughs> summer. We came in front of you with some projections on that, and, and these are our best assessments as to what's in front of us when about we could put them based on how much effort has to go into getting them to some point into the future onto the schedule but it shows you just simply what's in front of you the cost is it uh, those things are and in September we're going to come back and give you a lot of different options to fund things not necessarily okay. are we tied into things you could we could assume say for instance Sorry, Jeff, but maybe we don't want to do the DPW facility at all for over the next 10 years. So it's those kinds of decisions, though, but we're just trying to give you a working document to give you an idea of what you're up against, and we'll follow that up with revenue projections. Okay. Fair enough. We'd certainly like your thoughts on that. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for, uh, I think it's a very thorough presentation, and, and uh, I certainly would encourage, um, my experience at town meeting is that uh, this tends to be a capital because of the big numbers involves, involved and the different sources of uh, funding tends to be very confusing. Um, you know, we go through it three times, and by the time we're through it the third time, uh, we have an understanding of, of, of this. But, it, but I think uh, some attention to... Um, you know the the clarity is I think very important uh, so that when we present things to the to town meeting it it is very clear how things are being funded and what sources I think that's that's really important so well, thank you okay we'll work on thank that you all the, very much. the March presentation <laughs> appreciate your time thank you so much okay next item is board of selectmen board and committee actions mark uh, I have no uh, no appointments to present tonight. Excellent. Moving on. Approval of minutes of December 19th, 2017. We're in the packet. Move we accept this file. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on that motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, moving on. Um, upcoming agenda review. We are, uh, today is... <laughs> Today is February the 6th. So um, February 13th, we are going to start at 5 p.m. for the public. The change of change of uh, meeting time, we're going to start at 5. Um, so we have a lot of things to get through. Ambulance, hearing fees, beach sticker, second hearing, Commercial Fishermen's Alliance, Tritown Water District <coughs> Update by Town Council. Um, Cape Cod Tech ballot, Cape Cod Tech budget presentation, building project update, DPW budget, ATM articles for DPW and town council office hours um, are on February 13th. Then the following week we have no meeting. I don't really think there's anything we can add to that. We can't even make it a workshop because we have public hearings on there. 
Um, so we'll try and move through that. We start earlier. Um, where, where are the public hearings? In this? Well, there's a first hearing for ambulance fees and the second hearing for the beach stickers. Okay. We could put the uh, public comment at the uh, at the ten o'clock point. <laughs> so we can start at four, maybe, right? We can do public hearings within a workshop. Two and separate agendas. Anybody have any questions or comments on the upcoming agenda? Um, I know there is one other thing we have to try to fit in here. Um, Dan, if you want to. Yeah. I'm not sure actually what the board wants to do. So um, I was speaking to the chairman today, and uh, we have to, or we would like to put in front of the board in accordance with the charter provision section five, three candidates for department head interview for community services. Of course, uh, daunting task to try to fit it in on a regularly scheduled uh, meeting night. Um, but um, we did talk about having a separate special meeting just with the candidate interviews, and um, we could do that if you'd so inclined, as opposed to trying to work it into a pre existing meeting night. And um, that would be something up for you to consider. Um, but we would like to move on that sooner rather than later as the candidates have gone through their final internal interviews and we're at that point where we're ready to forward names to you for that final is that something we could do during that president's week well that's the thought we could maybe do something on president's week if we had a quorum available just devoted to that just purpose. devoted to that particular purpose yeah is it is there, that's school vacation week that's school vacation is week. anybody away that week uh i don't know but i'm sure that i will be traveling to hockey games somewhere that's I'm, usually my yeah. February vacation. <laughs> I, I may be away now that I think about it. I didn't bring my calendar, unfortunately. I, what I'm, about? I, I am away, definitely. Yeah. What about the following week, Monday? <coughs> uh, maybe, I think it's probably going to take about an hour. Or thereabouts, yeah. Is is there anybody on the tw available on the 26th? I mean, if we go closer to that, I'm afraid we wouldn't be giving the candidates enough notice to. So yeah, I mean, that's certainly an option. What about, own. I mean... I mean, I'm just throwing something you, out there. You don't want to do it a, a, a week, uh, February 12th? We could do February 12th if you think that gives, I mean, today's Tuesday the 6th. you think that gives them enough notice? Who are we talking about? I don't know. The three candidates. Could you do that? Yeah. Oh, February 12th? 12th is uh, It's kind of like a pseudo holiday, isn't it? Lincoln's birthday? It's not a day no, off. That's, that's the 19th. Yeah, the 19th, 19th is President's, is President's Day. Day. 19th is President's Day. Didn't you say, didn't you say next week was also a vacation week? No, the week after. The week after. President's okay. Day week, I believe, is school vacation. Is everybody available on the 12th? Michael? On the 12th? Wait a minute. I have to check hockey schedules. <laughs> I know. Well, it doesn't have to be a Monday. We're just trying to come to a consensus, so. You tell us when you're available, Is that Eric. next month? This coming month? Yeah. 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 Norm, we have affordable housing trust at five, but certainly after that we're open. Yeah, I'm good. The twenty on the can you do six o'clock on the twelfth? Sure. Okay. Yeah, Mike, you know maybe, maybe we can uh, convince affordable housing to go like a half hour earlier or something. Yeah, I could uh, talk to Mary about posting it earlier than that. Yeah. 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 I mean, we had, at one point we had been doing those 4 at four thirty. Yeah, it starts at four thirty. Okay. Yeah. Actually, we had a couple of people coming in uh, presentations, so that it's scheduled to go to 6.30, but I'll talk to her about starting at 4. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just going to move it back. All right. Well, so we'll send out an email following up, but that yeah. we'll shoot for that date at some point in time, whatever it is. Perfect. So when we, when we get the resumes <clears throat> on these people? ASAP. You can send them out when with uh, yeah, we'll provide the board with uh, resumes and cover letters uh, of all the candidates. There'll be a memo that we, uh, process that we've gone through, how long the position was posted, where we advertised it for, how our internal interview process went. Okay. We'll also supply you with the interview guide and questions that we use to evaluate the candidate. So a pretty comprehensive packet for the board to review before the before each interview. Okay. 
Okay, and we'll get that. If we get that as soon as possible, whenever you can figure out the timing of. Yeah, the I think you can get them all in. Yeah, we're gonna try one shot. Yep. Yeah. Okay, individual items. Uh, Mark. I don't have anything tonight. Mike. Nothing. Norm. All set. Eric. Nothing other than the fact that I had to go for a walk. My feet are freezing. Is it is uh, something? Yeah. something <laughs> I'm, I'm cold now too. you know why yeah. I switched My seats. Is there something yeah, no, different? Cold over here. No, this is what happens yeah, over there. The, uh, I think perhaps it, it wasn't like that before. No, it though. always yeah. blows the cold air out of there. <laughs> I told yeah, you I, I needed didn't to notice it that bad before the remodeling. Maybe your pants are getting to too short. Cool walk to warm my feet up. I get, to, I, get, I get to tell you that just before the meeting, Tracy went over and played with that thermostat. I well, did. she must have turned it down. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, can I, uh, can I suggest a vascular surgeon for you? I'm telling you. Or, or wool socks. That's why I moved from that seat. It is so cold. This, this intake yeah. thing blows cold air out. No, it sucks it in. No, that's it, an intake. It's, it all, that's why my, I got crying up here because the air comes <laughs> flying by my eyes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So no individual items other than it's cold in here. It's cold Eric's in here. Eric's feet. We yeah, need, feet now, he needs a, now he not only needs a cushy chair, he needs a Snuggie. Yeah, I thought you were so emotional about uh, what was going on oh. here, too. Yeah, <laughs> well, that, too. <laughs> consent agenda. <laughs> on the uh, consent agenda, we'd look for a motion. There's some donations. Uh, many boardwalk donations for uh, Bass Hole Boardwalk uh, coming in. The plank, $150 a donation coming in on that. Uh, so we'd look to have a motion for that. Is there a motion? Move we accept the consent on Jenna. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Town Administrator updates? Uh, Mike, did you second that? Uh, consent? Yes. He did. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, just uh, an update on, uh, we've been getting a lot of inquiries from uh, the Times uh, about the status of uh, the building and whatnot. So I want to thank everybody who participated yes. in getting us back to the hearing room. It looks fabulous. Uh, there was a lot of town effort put into this, but Disaster Recovery Services uh, did an excellent job getting us back to this point. The room looks fabulous, and despite the fact it's a little bit cold, we'll work on. Um, but this is uh, going to be a very long recovery process. So we had uh, adjusters in. Uh, last week, uh, relative to the IT infrastructure, there's some significant damage we've identified there. It's a big ticket item, somewhere about a half a million dollars. So we have to uh, work with the uh, insurance firm to discuss what the future is. And uh, I think it's fair to say that town staff would like to be out of the hardware infrastructure business and move mm -hmm. to a different mode. And I think the insurance company is probably a bit receptive to that. So it's an ongoing thing. Town operations, you shouldn't uh, see any change in that. Uh, the, but the equipment's been, uh, when it goes down, we put it back online. But it's certainly not like it was before the before the flood and uh, upstairs is the next phase of it uh, there's a lot of restoration you wouldn't see it again if you're the public generally it's in the um, assessors area it was heavily damaged uh, so at some point in the very near future we expect the recovery team to be back in there working on that and then uh, at some point uh, right now town staff uh, dick court and his crew has been working on reconstruction of the wing area that was home to um, conservation, Old Kings Highway, board, uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, and the uh, lunchroom, and we're reconfiguring that, and IT will be moving into that space, which then leaves us with um, the rest of the downstairs, and we'll be, after town meeting, working on a plan to reconfigure what that looks like to make the workflows more efficient for the different departments that will share that space. So we're going to be under this mode. There's no disruption to the public, though, but certainly if you would be interested in taking a look at what's going on, uh, just let us know, and we'll take you through the area. I just have yeah. one other question. If you could give us an update on the boardwalk. I've yeah, so the good news there is um, um, I'd like to thank the chairwoman for making connections with the sheriff's department. The staff has reached out to them. Uh, it looks like they are going to be available. They're helping out a lot of towns on the Cape, but I spoke to uh, the special sheriff today, and uh, the staff is working on aligning that work. It looks like the significant pile uh, driving work that needs to be done for the Bass Hole Boardwalk. It sounds like they can do that. So um, if that's the case, I think they're going to be coming into town late in February to put up some side railing uh, that was damaged at that Bass Hole. AmeriCorps, I met with them last week. Uh, looks like they're going to tackle the um, 
Taylor Bray uh, boardwalk, so that's pretty good news there for us on that aspect. And uh, Bennett Environmental will be out uh, to do some test borings in the uh, low tide area at Bass Hole for a future uh, restoration project, whatever that would look like to keep the seagrass back. So that starts in late February as well. So there's a lot of action going on down there. Good. Thank you. Yep. What's the status of the insurance claims? Yeah, so it's still, uh, <laughs> it's, there, there, there's a ton of damage across the Cape, and Maya is the big underwriter for most of these things. So um, the IT part of it is a dialogue. They actually wanted to go and start up all our damaged equipment that they could. And, so they're going to come back and try to do a lot of that. Uh, but as far as the uh, boardwalk, we've submitted an estimated damage claim. We submitted paperwork to FEMA as well on that. Uh, that was to go through. So we're just kind of in the process of uh, negotiating with what, what that looks like as to um, when we might see some money, what that dollar value is going to be. But uh, it's going to be a while to sort that out because of all the claims in front of them. But we've determined that we do have coverage because yep. when we last spoke, th they were resisting, saying that we didn't uh, have yeah, so that's this type of event. We paid for coverage, right? right? And uh, they are still haven't gotten back to us, like for sure. But we got to go through with the idea that uh, if the sheriff's available, uh, we should get that process started. We'll continue to go down that road. Br uh, Taylor Bray has no coverage, so that's glad that America, yeah, for some reason i'm not sure why i don't think maya's a big fan of insuring any new boardwalks mm -hmm. but uh but yeah so that's on its own so i was glad uh, americorps stepped up to they built it originally so. huge thanks to americorps and the sheriffs and maybe we could provide them lunch or something for their service while they're out there working well the something. chief has a stash of power bars and water bottles <laughs> <laughs> one every eight hours <laughs> um in all in all seriousness yeah, though, that's, yeah. it, yep. it seems to be um more timely so yeah that's great and if they're not going to pay the, the claim i think that we should really analyze whether or yeah, not our I'm premiums sure. are worth um the other uh, paying. <laughs> situation is that tentative uh tri-town dennis harwood Yarmouth board meeting for um right now it's scheduled uh the preferred dates march 15th over at dennis uh senior center and there's an invite that's been put out to the lieutenant governor's office uh, and that uh, will be the official local announcement of the planning grant that we received so do you I have just, a time I, I i think it was going to be scheduled for six o'clock uh i believe but it's not been concreted yet so okay. but uh if you wanted to plan for like six o'clock two other thoughts um in the process perhaps we can get jeff to work with the schools in terms of capital maybe they're having a harder time with um I think they, they don't are have the expertise yeah. so perhaps we could provide it or do it ourselves because i think we have to have confidence in those numbers but there are buildings no, um, that's one thing and and the second thing is i request that we've been getting a lot of handouts at our place um, it's a lot of information to go through when we're here if we could try to keep that as minimal as possible and give them as far in advance that Understood. would be that would be very helpful okay that's it did you have any other ideas? oh that's it okay motion to adjourn so moved second, second. <laughs> any discussion all in favor uh, yeah. Yeah, I think.